testing the mic one, two, sound check one, two, yeah. Sound check one, two, testing the mic one, two. Sound check one, two, one, two, yeah.
some check on it. Test my policy. Test my policy. Check on two, test five on two. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome you to the 26th Hanwell National Conference of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. At this point in time, we wish to invite the fellows of the association to please step forward to occupy the floor seats.
Yes, good, one, two. Yes, thank you. 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 How now? Who got this fine team? I know now. 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 I know I know now. I know now. I know now. I know now. I know now.
of you and I. That is the accountants. So for some of us who come to conferences, possibly just to snap, have photographs, and then have, it's good to network, but just have our businesses and leave. You cannot afford to leave this conference that is well crafted with a well crafted theme that is very important for you not to be a full participant at this year's conference. I therefore distinctively welcome each and every one of us that is well seated here to get prepared as to set the pace and the tone for this year's conference. From the 6th to the 9th of September 2001, we will be having a loaded program that will reveal a number of issues that will give us more ingredients to strengthen and see how we can recover our own economic stand as a nation. I therefore sincerely wish to congratulate each and every one of us that is seated here in this hall at the International Conference Center, the African Hall to be precise, to yet again witness an auspicious August function as the annual National Conference of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for yourselves wherever you're seated. At the appropriate time, I will be unveiling a very simple protocol, and as soon as the President and Chairman of Council of Anna was in here with a team of the Council members who will rise, and as soon as they get in there, we will be taking the first paper as one of the programs of this morning. Thereafter, we go into the opening ceremonies where the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will be in attendance. We order very important dignitaries that we have sent notifications and invitations. We're privileged that we have confirmation that at least two ministers, senior ministers of the Federal Republic will be in attendance. And we have great men and women of timber and caliber, Iroko and Mahogany, that will be right here today to look at this theme for this year's conference. One more time, let me briefly welcome every fellow of Ananda this year. If I fellow of this association, please just wave your hand. Every fellow, please. It is not easy as a way. It means they have been consistent in all that they've been doing in this association. They may have spent nothing less than 10 years, and they have been really reputable wherever they are serving and in whatever they are doing. Please, can we put our hands together for all the fellows of the board? If we are a member of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, please wave wherever you are seated. Just let me see your hand. Yes, I saw that fellows did not wave. You are a member before you are a fellow. Please hold the members of honor. Just wave and let me see you. Credible people, very solid people. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Thank you very much. Let me just tell you something a bit about Anna, where we have moved from where it was established to today. We're a member of every international accounting body in the world that matters. Hello? If I were you, I would celebrate our internationalism. Thank you. And I want to be made to understand that the chief treasurer, I mean treasury, the chief treasurer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Accountant General is a fellow of this association. And also to see that we are doing well and we have got to the state where Anna is giving the hold of the required elements of growth in financial management, in financial planning, in assurance services and all that, we have been also been duly informed on the documentation that the Auditor General of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a fellow of the association. Celebrate them and celebrate yourselves too. Thank you very much. I want to thank the
for this time. Before I've been taking us to a lot of sweet melodies that have been with us all through. Thank you very much for this band. The rock to us and the technical folks are already seated and everyone that is here. Very soon we will start this in earnest. And I want to welcome each and every one of you at this guest conference. Thank you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy yourselves at this conference. Put your hands together and I acknowledge everyone in Utah and introduce myself. Thank you. The police man can go on us. Alright, thank you very much. I have the privilege and honor, ladies and gentlemen, to please rise as we welcome the president of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, the number one accountant season as far as we know in this country today. Ladies and gentlemen, give the standing ovation to welcome the man who is an academic in the man child. A professional repeal, and above all, a man who is really endowed with administrative skills. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin to celebrate. Thank you very much, for that. Thank you. The band you can continue. You are free to move. Thank you very much. We have you working. Is riding with his vice president, with his council members, the immediate past president, and all our council members that are here. Thank you. The band you can go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Happy to see 
Strategic options for economic recovery, the role of the accountants. The President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is yet again the annual, annual topic of Anam. As I say that it will be previous, and I say that we all gather every year to articulate and look at so many ways to support governments in forming and fashioning our strategies for good economic and national development and national growth. And this year again is not different. The President and his team, under the able leadership of the second vice president, who this year is the chairman of conference, workshop, and Publicity Committee of Anam have thought it wise to craft a theme that is redirected at economic recovery. We would not say it is not our business. And I think, ever before, this is one of the topics that concerns each and every one of us. So I therefore urge everyone that is at this 26th conference to be really prepared, open up, loosen up, and ensure that our participation is to the optimal. How to say this? May I invite two people of the national and recognized faith, let me just put it this way, and I don't mean to offend any of those who belong to the other religious persuasions, but in Nigeria we believe that we are Christians and Muslims. I therefore request the two representatives, a Christian and a Muslim. I know when we get to the other program, we will take it. But you know, we have a leadership that is highly endowed spiritually too. And each and every one of us is a handmaid of the Almighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have two representatives to come and say a short prayer that you will now bring us back and listen to other prayers. So please come forward, say a short prayer, so that you allow God to listen to other prayers. 
Christian and a Muslim. Quit it, please. Don't push them. No protocol, I'm here to do the protocol. You can come up, sir. Yeah, the father, the son of Christ, Christ. Oh, I want to thank you for this occasional okay, to speak to you. Thank you for your name, thank you for the to the members, all members of the family. Thank you for the time you made it. You have to the occasion and what you the will of the Lord in your hands. May you get down now and glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much, Francis Ludo, who also learns Christian. And you are up. Huh? Send us your hand that will take us to is the fellow place. I uh, thank you for reminding me. Sir. <laughs> Because a lot of us who come and study who studies or study who is um, today, I think I want to thank you immensely for leading us through that. Once again, my name is John Pilato. I'm a fellow of Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. I know three numbers out of my four numbers, so I'll keep it. When I get this spot one, I'll tell you my membership number. Hello. If you don't want to run my career down, please put your hands together for me. I beg you. I beg you. No, 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 no. It's like we're not happy being here. Please put your hands together for the master of ceremony. Oh, fantastic. Because if we can't clap for the investor who is leading the, the conversation, it means even the president, you might be reluctant to welcome me. Let me quickly, at this point, I will just will quickly because we have one paper to take. But we will just have to observe this. The protocol will be shut, but then when we get to the opening ceremony, we'll take this, I mean, the full protocol. The distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on this 26 annual conference of Anam, I have the privilege and honor to welcome and salute the Anam President Chairman of Council, a man who is completely and fully endowed. Is an academic of repute of the highest capex as far as academic is concerned. Is a man of God who has an insignia of the Reverend Canon, and indeed a man who administratively is completely rich. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Professor Benjamin Chuka, for CCOMAN, SKA, the President and Chairman of Council of the Society of National Council in Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us the privilege and giving approval for this year's conference. Let me quickly also welcome the first vice president of Anam, a man whom I also worked under him for the first time that I belonged to any committee in Anam. He was at one time the chairman of, con of conference, workshop, and publicity committee of Anam. Ladies and gentlemen, another very gentleman to the fore, Dr. James Ekerere. I mean about SNA. Let's put our hands together for him. Whether he's here or not, he'll be with us because he's engaged in another official function that you do not bring up. My chairman, as far as this conference is concerned, the second vice president and chairman of conference workshops and publicity committee of this great professional accounting association, ladies and gentlemen, this year. She has done exceedingly well, well good planning. It is therefore my privilege and honor to welcome Hadja Zubaira Talat officially as CNA. Let's put a hands together for this very workaholic mobile second vice president and a member of the council. It is also my privilege and honor to welcome on that list of the council the immediate 
class president. This I simply call him my teacher, and I always tell him that if I'm doing well, he did well by bringing me up. But if I'm doing well, he should be held responsible for never forming me well. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for another academic in the Manjaro, Professor Muhammad Akaro Nainaman, M and I at CNN. I recall historically the day Professor Menoma was at NUC that he received the certificate of the association's university. I don't think there is none of that university that has existed anywhere in the world. Where a professional association had established her own, her own university. Sir, we don't take this your good work for granted, but it's because you and the members of council work um, are saving the well. And also because of our uh, early fathers who did well, that is why we are thriving. We must put on that on record. Thank you very much, sir. Let's also put our hands together for the treasurer of the association, Dr. Ibrahim Babajide Away Agologa, FCNA. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. That is the purse of the association. But please, for those of you who want to go to him to check his pocket, when that is association money, the pocket is the bank. Or that doesn't carry money of association anyway. Thank you very much sir, for being here this morning. The Membership Secretary of Anna, a member of Council of the Hadi Ryan Hussein and Gilado, FCNA. Let's Hussein, please. Hussein Gilado, FCNA. Thank you very much, sir. Let me also welcome Mr. Ibrahim Makut, a member of Council FCNA. Thank you very much, sir. Let's also welcome Dr. Sunday Ojelabi, FCNA member of Council. And we also wish to please on record that Allahad Muhammad Bulama, FCNA member of Council, is also in Andes. Let's also welcome Mr. Clarence Odo, FCNA is a member of Council. Let's also welcome Dr. Suleiman A. Arua, FCNA, one of my old teachers. Thank you very much for being here. Mrs. Alice Burum, SCNA member of council. Thank you very much ma, for being here this morning. Let me also welcome the Al Haji Bureau, Dr. Kaura Muhammad, FCNA member of council. Let's put our hands together for him. He will soon be with us. Let's also put our hands together for Chief Peter Anyam, FCNA member of council. Thank you very much for being here. Let me also distinctively welcome Dr. Olaye Sunday at the Wale FCNA Member of Council. Thank you very much. We would like to also welcome the man who is comfortably the Secretary and also the Chief Executive of Obama, Dr. Nuruddin Abba Abdullahi MNI. FCNA is the right Chief Executive of Obama. Thank you very much. Let me also welcome o Let me also welcome the past presidents that are here with us because we must give honor to whom honor is due. Let's welcome Dr. Samuel Nzebek, FCNA. Thank you very much sir, for being here. We also welcome Chief Mrs. Iyami Dindafar, FCNA. Thank you very much, ma. You will join us. Let's also welcome Alahad, I'm sorry, Haja Miriam Lani Ryan, FCNA. Thank you very much, ma'am. Anytime I call your name in functions of honor, it, a lot of it resonates. It was only your able leadership that you fished me out as um, someone who could compare function. And I don't take that for granted. It must go down history. Thank you very much, ma'am, for giving me the platform. Let's also welcome Allahaji, Dr. Secretary Junji Laude, FCNA. Thank you very much, sir. And Yoroko, thank you very much, the professor at Yoroko. Mr. Anthony Chukwe Meganza, FCNA. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, he will join us very soon as the past president as well. And also, my very dear old sir, Allahaji Shehu Usman Lada, MNI, FCNA, is the past president as well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we might not exhaust the full list that we have here because time is of the essence. The first paper was actually supposed to come at 10, so I just wanted to make sure that the room is kept warm because of the 
President and other members of council that are in the app. Other recognitions and acknowledgements will come later when we're heading into or once we come into the opening ceremony. I therefore pray the indulgence of the president and the rest of us to take on the first panel session discussion. At this point, I wish to invite the sub team one chairman. Let's welcome Dr. Titilayo Falcon, FCNA Group Head, Strategic Tax and Compliance, Dangote Industries Limited, who will be the chair of this session. A round of applause for this elegant woman. I know we have worked in so many conferences of CITN. You have really been supportive just that when you became the chairman, I did not answer that function. But uh, I want to publicly forgive you. Put your hands together for her and she take her seat. Thank you very much, ma'am. And we're pleased to have you. Let's welcome the lead presenter at this conference for this team. Let's please put a very resounding round of applause for Professor Francis Ibea Uchi Amago. HCID Branch Controller, Central Bank of Nigeria, Abuja Branch. Please put your hands together for this cream, Dula cream, of our uh, financial sector, the FX Bank. Oh my goodness. So I just want to ask you a question. Is there anybody in Central Bank who's as tall as well? Because all the people I've seen in the Central Bank are very tough. Maybe it's what is coming in that is making everyone tough. A round of applause to the branch control. Thank you very much. I was so excited to have you and we can really tap on the growth of your experience and your knowledge. May I invite all the discussants of this session, a great woman of the association and indeed also academic icon of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the first discussion, Professor Jane O and A, FCNA of the Department of Accountancy, University of Just Pledge State. Thank you very much, ma'am. She has served the association in so many capacities on so many areas of support and supporting the strategic theme of Anna. We're pleased to have you and thank you very much, ma'am, for accepting to be here. Let me lastly welcome the second discussion of this first something that we'll be having to discuss before you open ceremony. Let's welcome Professor Anayo and Kanebe, CNA, Department of Marketing, Nandi Asikwe University, Oka, and Ambra State. Please put your hands together for this. Another I am getting reviewed. We thank you very much, sir. Very young professor at that. Um, sometimes I think I begin to wonder when a professor doesn't wear glasses to wear and wear. I don't know. For some of you who don't know, I'm also getting there to be a professor of the talking industry. That's why I also have my own lenses now. Because this is one of the things that may qualify me. And my right is for this. Please put your hands together for all the professors we have. It's not easy to be a professor. I keep on saying this. Thank you. So having said that without wasting much time, we're moving straight into the session. And the protocol is very simple. The first presentation will be made. It will be by the lead presenter. The discussion will be followed. But of course, the chairman's role is to coordinate and facilitate. Thereafter, there will be comments and questions and answers, and we'll do that, and we'll hope to end by 10, I mean 11, sorry, by 11.30. So please, the chair, keep this with you on the lawyer's sleeves, and please, let's make sure they were exact on the time. I really would have loved to read the profile of everyone that is here, the time, as you say, in accounting is of the essence. Their profiles are all here in the brochure. 
structure in the both that we have in the program document profile that we have. I pray your indulgence to please go through this beautifully at your own time so that we will not take much time in reading out their profile. If that is okay by everyone here, let's completely put our hands together to those that we have in front of us to take the street on the subject. Please can we give them a resounding round of applause. I would therefore invite the chair or yeah, the chair will come to the podium and just make, make a few comments and then we'll set the pace, I mean set the tone for the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for giving me a good morning. Good morning everyone, my professional colleagues, Mr. President of the of our institute, I'm a member of this institute, I'm a fellow, all council members, let me stand by the existing protocol so I don't break the protocol. Thank you very much. Um, our session is supposed to be for one and a half hours, but we can understand uh, we've gone a bit into the time. So it's going to be a bit um, um, straight. I want to fix everybody into the time we've been given. We'll try as much as possible. We're looking at the topic ethical financial inclusion for economic recovery. And the key word that strikes to me is the word and the word ethical, financial inclusion, and economic recovery. So these are critical words that we're going to be exploring in this first session. The session will go this way. Our lead group presenter will spend about 15 minutes. Apologies for that, sir. Uh, and then the discussion will take about five minutes each. And then we can take time for questions because we believe that members that are here should be able to take something back from this session. So the critical thing is that we'll be looking at financial inclusion and that is for everybody to have opportunity to be able to access financial services. Whether you're in the grassroots or you're in the urban areas, you should have access to that. So we do justice to this. Our lead group presenter is fully prepared to do the justice and the discussions are also well loaded. I want to pass to your speaker. Be ready to take something. Let's start to get the benefits of this session as we start right now. So I have the privilege and honor to call on the new paper presenter, Professor Francis Ibewachu Amango. Thank you very much.
Mais quand je suis arrivé à l'écran de conférence, cette présentation nous focus sur la conférence de Russie. Et le premier stratégie pour être un écran pour les rouleurs et les nationalités. Cet état financier de Russie est heavily dominated on the lowest level of economic competence and poverty and invasion. This presentation and discussion will not have come at a better time than now when the global economy, particularly the lowly countries, is facing epileptic growth, high inflation, and memories from COVID-19 epidemic. It is therefore gratifying to note that the problems are coming only in Nigeria and are needed to fit to make this paper a key focus of discussion on the activities and our conference. I am therefore grateful to Anna and its organizers for inviting me to be part of the program through this presentation. Please note, beyond this important information, the paper will be presented in PowerPoint with discussions along the line. By way of outline, I will start the background definition of concepts. Why financial inclusion? We need to understand. And you cannot talk about financial inclusion without talking about poverty and nation. Motives of holding on ingredients of rural development. We we'll look at all these things, but the major discussion will focus on ethical issues of financial inclusion. That was the target for financial inclusion. And that was to achieve 20% only of excluded economic operators from financial inclusion. You can go through the slides on your own, but I'll be summarizing so that I can work with it in the Germanist time. Nigeria did not meet that target. And that's a new target of 95% in 2024. So if we could not meet the target of 2020 is going to be a tall order for us to beat the 94% by 2024. But the interesting thing to note is that our association like Ghana has joined other stakeholders to provide the requisite centralization for financial inclusion. We have all heard about mobile money networks, various agents, uh, POS, ATM, and all those processes. But the ethical issue in it is do Nigerians have confidence in the financial system? And if not, why not? How can Nigerians have confidence in the financial system? When at the slightest prompting, the financial institutions take your money without the value back to you. We are all aware of hackers, cyber crime. We are also aware of crimes at point of sales terminals. So, what do we do to make sure that we restore the confidence of Nigerians? In the financial system. As we talk about financial inclusion, we are looking at the rural areas, the economic competitors. There is no village in Nigeria that does not have a rural market. Where do they put their money? Do they have access to financial services? What is the level of financial literacy in Nigeria? These are the challenges facing financial inclusion achievement. And if we cannot get to even the 80% that 
that was earlier targeted for 2020. We cannot be talking about economic recovery. World over and globally, it is given that financial inclusion is a basic strategy for economic growth. And the moment Nigeria is in at the lowest level of economic activity are brought into financial implementation, the money based with the public will come into the system to join the money based with the banks so that there will be a for intermediation. Unfortunately, you go to some local governments in Nigeria to assess the closest financial uh, bank, microfinance bank, will be about 20 kilometers away. So we are looking for this situation where, just like in the SM revolution, Nigeria should be able to operate and assess financial services without having to take the pains of assessing whether the positive money or withdrawing from the system. Then talking about confidence in the system, we also need to mobilize Nigeria into a very high financial literacy program. For example, this conference is having only in Abuja. How many conferences go in the local government? Mr. President, sir, you have your members across Nigeria, throughout the three months and four local governments. Please, the one is government to challenge them to go to their various local governments, unfortunately. And we be talking about have we lost our abilities? We have all run away from abilities. I'm afraid of Boko Haram. I'm afraid of kidnappers. I'm afraid of real forms of crimes. We should go back to the abilities. We are the markets are still thriving. Economic activity is still holding the markets. And make sure that we, we sensitize economic operators at the lowest level so that they can be part of the financial inclusion strategy. It is achievable if only organizations like China, associations like China, will join the CPL. If you go through the paper, you will also see the efforts. It might interest you to know that financial inclusion is now a national program headed by the, the financial institutions of CPL. And the council is headed by the vice president of the Superman. So, but it cannot end with what we do in the urban areas. It has to be still down to our localities. But we cannot focus on the ethical issue because it will be discouraging. I even know some accountants who don't want to give their money, who don't trust banks. They do not trust banks. A few days ago, the bank placed a PNP on my account, a central bank controller. An account has sufficient balance. Why would I tell banks, because of the greed to make money, charge excessive or excessive, uh, make excessive charges on your ATM withdrawals? Sometimes the money is not even dispersed. And it takes about three days, sometimes seven days. So that during the month, you're going to get your credit back. It's making that you have to lose confidence in the financial system. But I think we, of course, you are aware that by October, we'll be having e naira e naira is going to give us the trolling box. It will reduce the cash implications of our economy. And we are hoping that e will help the economy move forward. But the implementation has to start. And it's not going to be limited to the conferences we hold in Abuja and the various cities in Nigeria. We have to go down to the rural areas and tap into the economic activities so that Whatever 
is earned from the economic activities in the rural areas will be brought into the financial system so that both the accountants and other economic operators at the highest level will be able to document, assess, report, and manage the Nigerian economic activities for sustainable growth. I think I have to stop at that. The paper will, if you are interested in the paper, you can access it and they will show you the website to access it. So, I would also want to highlight other ethical issues and challenges that affect financial inclusion in Nigeria. Um, we also have physical challenges where the sensitivity are going to find this access of uh, suitable financial products to suit the needs to various micro individuals and groups. In agreement technology, yes, talking about technology, most of our challenges. At the point, I'm not going to say that it's not easy to access uh, network. And that's the reason why we can do electronic voting. It obtains into using POS terminals, PSM to make transfers. You can even to make a transfer using the technology available. It's a very big address to the effective contribution of a financial inclusion for economic growth. If it doesn't make a profit, only my camera can help in testifying the specialization for people to understand the meaning of interest rates. When interest rate is high, when it is low, and even credit to economic operators. They will talk about poverty. This has been compounded on the fact that people are no longer going to fight. And if that person has taken the vaccine, uh, the instance of Boko Haram, the Nabi Haram, the Nabi Haram, has not even come for farmers to go to farm. And we are talking about IPP. People in IPP have been reduced to beggars. And these are people we either do. We are farmers and making beautiful money. Sometimes they live on the. This is Edomi and Russians. But they need to go back. So it's a challenge to put the government and various stakeholders to ensure that those living IGP camps go back to their farms and live normal rural life, which encompasses both cultural and economic activities. So if people in the IGPs are no longer farming, that means they are not contributing to the economy. So we will now restrict the return to the economy to the last elephants who operate in the town. Of course, the cost requirements for assessing finance is another interest. When you go to the bank, online to open account, it might look easy. But whenever you want to assess money, credit, they will ask you for the money certificate. And we have to make sure. It's a job responsibility. It's not a responsibility of the central bank alone. Both the financial institutions and their customers must be sensitized to access money for economic activity has to be very, very easy and simple. Of course, we know about the cultural diversity. Uh, we know about the interest banking. I don't know who believe you the know interest banking, but it's a very useful instrument to galvanize economic operators into contributing to uh, financial inclusion. So it is my humble belief that all the stakeholders in finance and accounting must join the efforts in sensitizing the Latino public of financial inclusion. And with it, we cannot agree to talk about economic recovery. 
uh, you will allow him to divert it off from his work. And uh, you need to be just one time to read. And then he started to elaborate some of the areas that are very useful. That it is including everybody. Everybody to be involved, even in the rural communities. We are talking in our economy. This also is one of the slides from the presenter in terms of the financial inclusion strategy, which the Central Bank has put in place. I will urge you, please, because of the time, to please find time to read it of what he has also shared with us. And I like the drawing, I mean, the diagram. If you allow me to present this to you, and after I said, please, dear lady, you allow me, I picked up from his slides before I go it. And he just showed you what it's all about. Everybody should be involved. Everybody, whatever your business, whatever your dream. We are supposed to be involved in dealing with finances, you know, that are not kept at home. And we have about 2 billion people worldwide that have not been really involved. And we need to get such people to enjoy the former services. I know we are used to the traditional bank in the Yesusu, and we are saying that is not enough. We need to formalize it. If you look at the statistics for Nigeria, we have up to 21 billion dollars that people are keeping at home. And you see, see the diagram that just showed you. This was taking life from the situation in Nigeria, maybe you remember one of the crisis situation we have. And if people keep such at home, my economy cannot grow. We cannot recover. And some keep it under their mattress, some keep it in containers and all the rest. So with 1.1 billion people that are on fat adults, and yet we have the Android food. And the comment here, the right there just to warn us when you keep bending your neck, you please be careful before you have final for the problem, or this on your phone. The presenter also had this slide for his presentation, which gave us why do we need it? And then it's of poverty reduction, job pressure. And I just gave those uh, statistics to see how people are reviewing jobs with your home agents, your pay over and all the rest. And the wealth pressure for the economy and the wealth pressure to be to be up. And when with COVID that came, it became difficult to enter many banks. I don't know how many of you have been parading or going to banks like before. So this financial inclusion and this agents we have money, banking, mobile banking will help us a lot. And technology, and if you guys want, I will want to finish on. But it just to bring to mind what the lady is doing her wedding, to tell you that you can be included. All she used was to use that uh, free code to generate money. You don't need to throw money or test her forehead with your naira that has to be the COVID uh, the virus. So with that, people can go to the bank and use it up or share it. The presenter also tried to round up, gave this also the, the, what the federal government has put in the of financial inclusion, or to the point of reporting, which he said in five days. So two orders have been proposed, or present a range from central bank and somebody publishes. I like the bank that we need and make you become a bank. You keep an account for your bank, uh, bank agents, or you have people come up who are non bank led model, you know, and you create an open an account called the banking account, agency banking account. And with this account, they load you with money to tie to your account in the bank. You can operate easily. And so you can do that. But there are restrictions which they cross, which are all those listed. Those are the restrictions in those colors. And then we have one of these challenges, which he has also mentioned some of them. I put some in red to show that this case of money laundry is a big challenge. People are now using it, and so the government is not too comfortable. And even theft, to the point of even stealing the whole chaos that people carry their stealing money, but people steal them, not talk of the cash. So we have a technology which is a big one. And I'm asking a question, uh, Madam Chair. I think we'll start using my own questions in my discussion. The federal government has this electronic money transfer levy that is 15 naira per transaction per person. And I'm asking why. I'm sure all this money goes to CPM. I'm sure our lead presenter can ask us. It's also affecting those who do this money transfer. And then, so how can we sustain this? If we keep having so in the option, and we have two million workers, and you have been fifteen naira being levy because you are doing online, you know how much the government has paid even for such amount of money.
money. So it's a thing of concern for some of us. I won't discuss this, but I think this is nice for this work. And just to give you that these are all that we are talking about. It should be available, it should be accessible, it should be affordable, there should be a wideness, and also it should be adequate enough so that we all have the included in the financial recovery of our nation. How many of us see this news now? Except for the 500 naira news, most of the lower denomination, and in any economy, the moment you don't see smaller denominations again, the economy is sick. Something is wrong. And even if you see them, they are so dirty, so stinky that some of us even don't want to go. It means we are in ICU, we are in care. And I believe by now we should be at this stage where we are saying we are recovering and we hope to recover very well. But then, let's look at some of the four values. We have them at home this month, but we have them in the, in the national policy. We have one to those seven points for the four values. And as a professional like Ghana, we also have our own ethical uh, guidelines for our members. They are there in your hand and uh, hand. -in. But now the last aspect which is the digital aspect of it is the thing of concern. When COVID came, only seven percent people had mobile appliance to do schools. Radio 20% and TV programs only 17. So how do this work in our economy today? The internet coverage policy and authority is very has a bit of a challenge and then we just, the second question I have to share for us to discuss this. With our proposed 5G, are we on KU Bank, C Bank, or a broadband with Nigeria? Why is it always failing? Why does it work in other countries and it's not working? It appears we are not yet on broadband with and we are not ready for the 5G. And I think somebody might need to answer that question for us. So these are the percentages of our infrastructure deficit. We are half what you have in the whole world. And if you find yourself, you don't want to go over that cable again because of the complex nature of fixing it. If you go underground, we have the same challenge again. Who day is us? Who day be destroyed? Can our roads be comfortable for us to even put your underground cables? And so we have a lot of challenges. And our developments are the really coming up in Africa, especially in Nigeria. You see, we have become second. And we have 85,000 developers as of 2020 when the World Bank meets the statistics. And what about light? We also have to We changed from the electric company of Nigeria, ECM. We changed to NEPA. We are now in PHCM. And power is even there. We still have all these challenges to meet us and assist us to get digital transformation done. So we can increase our speed of internet if we want the rural areas to develop. And even those of us in the city, I came in yesterday when I was trying to download the lot of it. I discovered that I was better off in chaos than even in a good account of internet. I don't know what is happening with the internet service for the providers. And we need a lot to improve on the internet of things. All this is what we need the economy to go Get to this stage now, which is your, one of your last slides, that by 2024, we want to see 95% of persons in our financial institution. Thank you very much for your patience. It is now this year as we are going to several regional companies. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I would want to say that even in the few minutes that you have, you've covered quite a lot. I was just watching and going to catch up with you. And to see which members and participants, I want to quickly go into the second discussion uh, without taking so much of our time. But I, I, I can say that Prof has left us with so many questions which we need to find answers to. And that's if we want to get where we want to be. Now we're talking about everything, internet, internet, internet. My major worry is the people in the village, in the rural areas, they know about this and they even assess this and they operate these things. These are questions we have to look at. How do we get them enlightened to be able to be part of financial inclusion? I have also honor and pleasure to call on Professor Anna Yos to carry the CNA to take us through his thoughts about the tips of team ethical financial inclusion for economic recovery. You're welcome, Prof. Mr. President, let me start with the existing protocol. 
the lead presenter and uh, the first discussant took us through the entire landscape of the team. So I would uh, try as much as possible to avoid any repeats. But it is very obvious from the presentations and from other knowledge we know that financial inclusion is a key enabler to economic development, therefore, should serve as a key economic recovery strategy. However, most of Nigerians are still excluded from the financial system. I want to just raise issues that will guide our, our discussions here and also as an association on key areas of intervention that would help to foster financial inclusion in the system. Because when we look at it, it is obvious that the public sector accountants do not fully capture the reality of public sector stewardship with apparent indication in planning of economic recovery. Yes, there's no way we can plan for economic recovery when the economic activities are not properly accounted for. This should be a concern for the association on how this could be done. Now, let us go straight to the issues, dimensions I want us to reflect on. Uh, and that is looking at ethical financial uh, inclusion um, from the perspective now of what should be the role of the accountants, what should be the role of the uh, professional accountancy organizations, and what should be the role of the system of the accountant science in trying to help do this. First of all, I know that Anna, like other global stakeholders in the profession, such as the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, such as IFAC, have produced a number of frameworks and manual on how to help the micro and small enterprises to adopt the uh, accounting record because if we are taking the perspective of the micro and small businesses, one of the reasons why their businesses fail, which exclude them from the financial system, is their inability to keep proper records of their business transaction. And that is why there's high level of mortality in that sector. What, has the, what can the association do to develop a more user-friendly, simplified accounting manual for micro and small businesses to enable them to adopt the accounting as a better way of preserving their businesses. Can the association move a lot deeper into the uncharted areas of the micro and small businesses and simplify, decode the science of accounting practice in such a way that they can easily adopt this? I guess that if we, if this is done, it will help in reactivating or sustaining the businesses at that level that will make them to be continually included. Another question and the issue that is of importance here is, have we really taken time to study the attitudes of these micro and small businesses? in the adoption of even the existing manuals. What about uh, small business, micro small business accounting education? 
if we look at our accounting education, it looks as the focus is largely on the big businesses and structured, highly formalized organizations. I think for us in the developing countries where we have a whole lot of the micro and small enterprises, it is very, very important, extremely important and important that small and uh, micro business accounting should be emphasized in the educational sector. So that a typical, a typical graduate of accountancy profession we have that mindset of how to use the, uh, the, the professional skill to help the small businesses to grow. Then that brings us to the issue of the, uh, the public accountancy organizations in Nigeria realizing their corporate social responsibility. And that goes in by way of advocacy advocacy for the interventions by government that will have to tackle some of these challenges that have already been highlighted even in this uh, uh, by the first and the second uh, present presentations here. I think the public accountancy organizations should be at the forefront of helping in advocacy and desensitization, especially among the regulatory agencies that will help to ensure that these things are implemented. Now, for the micro and the small businesses to adopt accounting practice that will help to include them in the financial system, they must trust the accountants. They must trust the accountant. And that is where the ethical issues comes in now. For the small businesses to be included, they may depend on the professional accountant uh, with their resources. And uh, it is very critical that the accountant must serve, must exhibit high level of ethics, high level of morals, in fact, behavior that goes beyond the standard. So that in all ramification, the account, the, the essence is the financially illiterate. The financially illiterate will not have any reason whatsoever to doubt the profession and the professional. And that is where we as members, working in all the nooks and crannies of this country, becomes agents for financial inclusion. And by the time, if by our conduct or by our action or inaction, we try to scare away these persons, there's every tendency that will be anti-inclusion and uh, will go helping in pushing forth the already helping in excluding a lot of people from the financial system. I particularly take this dimension of micro and small businesses, not just because it is an area of strong interest, but because of its critical role in the Nigerian economy and uh, because of the large size of the informal sector in the Nigerian economy. I think, what I, as, I, as I conclude, that the association holds it as a social responsibility to be in the forefront, not just uh, to promote the kind of accounting that is so simplified that these small businesses, these micro businesses will learn how to keep accounts of their economic transactions. Otherwise, they may continually be outside the system. I want to believe that these issues and some others that may not, I may not have emphasized here, coupled with
in others that the cost of our discussions would help to boost up the current track towards inclusivity. Thank you very much.
Yes. I thought we have counted that side. Maybe you just remember the question. Where is one? There's one lady who there's a lady in the house. If there's no lady, I'm not going to open. Yeah, I said. Oh, we have two. Hello. Let me see. There's someone. Yeah, there's a lady here. Yeah, Jenna. Jenna. Because my next project is supporting the female president in Nigeria. Whether you like it or not.
So it is believed that savings like S money is the only savings that is available for intermediation. Because banks use it to give out loans. And that is why banks pay interest. Unfortunately, there is no conventional correlation between what the banks pay on interest for savings to the economic situation of the country. The rate paid to you is battered by inflationary trend. Of course, we know what is happening to the dollar exchange rate. So, but what should be paramount is money given to the bank is to a reasonable extent safe. We call it risk-free asset. Because you can assess it whatever you need. Back on like when the investment is in a real asset. When you invest in a real asset, you need some time to be able to convert it into cash. Of course, you don't know where to do that. When you are saving, it is the need that you can assess it to use it whenever you need. But if it's a physical asset, you need to convert it. But unfortunately, the interest rate is not measured to compensate for the inflationary trend on the sales. Um, you also alluded to the fact that uh, when that's my investment. Yeah. Yes. You see, unfortunately, Nigerian banks are investors. Investors in parentheses. Because of the high overhead from infrastructure to gain, electricity, and high cost of operations, they try to look for loose ends to make up, to make money. That is why at the standard provocation, if you do a transaction, have you noticed that the credit goes before the, the debit goes before the credit? They will take it to instantly. And if you call a person that is receiving the money, you may not have gotten the credit. That's the timeline. And money has time value. So the young ones are always looking for loose corners to make up for the high cost of operations. We will not have it right in terms of uh, reducing the cost of operations. And that is why in the foreseeable future, especially with the impact in common, I foresee a situation where bridge and mortar banking will reduce, where there are not any physical buildings for banking operations. You just do everything electronically. That is if we get the infrastructure right. Then, the second person talked about KYC. Know your customer. It's for purely planification. And we have made progress in this direction. Uh, about two decades ago, it was difficult for us to get it right because you need to know where your customer resides or his business location. You need to have a firm identification of your customer. That's what customer because you must know your customer. Because if you do not know your customer, if you have to locate him, you might be going to a wrong place. But with the uh, biodata listings, where everything about your application is recorded, it will be easier for you to locate your customer using either the phone number, the various applications, which are in the system. Unfortunately, though, we do not have a common application for Nigerians. But we are moving towards a situation where an identity for a customer will not be used both in elections and various areas where they are needed. We have a national identification number, we have driver's license, national password. I believe all these things will come together to give one single identity for every bank customer. There's no one talk about roads. Why are roads expensive? Because money based 
the public is still high, leaving little for money pays to the banks. And when money pays to the banks is slower than money pays to the public, the law of demand and supply. People want loans, and banks have to make money from it. But with high financial literacy and uh, inclusion, there will be enough liquidity and uh, the man should be able to learn and set good things. You are also aware that all the senior interventions, loans, come and set good things, which makes it cheaper for you to assess loans with senior interventions. Then, we want to talk about excessive charges. This is a kind of work. But the answer to it is that if Nigeria gets sufficiently educated on the dynamics of financial activities and banking operations, you should be able to approach your bank and complain. In CBA, we have a whole department for consumer protection. What you do as a customer of a bank, if you notice you have charges that you can take a bank and not explain, you write a letter of complaint to the bank. Give them one way to respond. If they do not respond, you attack that letter and write to CBM, the Director of Consumer Protection, and I'm sure you will get the issue resolved. There have been several issues resolved in this area. Uh, to summarize all the questions, have been asked, we need to be financially literate. We need serious engagements. We need serious electoral campaigns to make sure that Nigerians are financially literate. And if they are financially literate, financial inclusion will succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to take uh, the other questions. Let me just add my voice to the issue of our national debt to GDP. It has been on the increase, and it is we are over the standard average as provided by the United States right now. It should be about 104.17% or 105.4% or more than that. But we are at 127.4%. You can Google this and just go this on my phone. We show that we are above the normal average. We are borrowing too much and it's not healthy for our nation's growth or recovery. So we need to slow down on that. And if you look at what I, the insecurity issue, I think I had mentioned, we mentioned that to all of us who thought that it's a big challenge to all of us. We can't be talking of economic recovery when you cannot sleep, you cannot do your business, you are under country, the COVID came, you have country to slow down. That should tell you what the magnitude of the impact will be on us. So we need to really work hand in hand with government to tackle this insecurity issue. Or else what we are just saying here will be theory for many areas. What can accountants do? I know I started by saying we are supposed to be involved. I mean, when I had this interaction with some of our bankers, I tried back and I've not been involved with this issue of uh, mobile money and the rest. Uh, the literacy aspect will be taken care of. If you that you have been trained as an accountant, you are involved. The issue of lights, you will be able to know how to get around it. Is it a solar panel you need to install? Is it a small mobile gem? I know the charges will be increased, but at least you are reaching somewhere. You will be able to make more impacts. Is this a rechargeable force and all the rest you need? So you will be able to manage the business better when you are more educated in that area. And that's why we are challenging ourselves to get involved. There should be no accountant should be idle. No accountant say you don't have a job. You can, this is a job opportunity, and I believe with our CPM, the presenter here, you can get more. Or just go to your bankers. 
They are very weak. For every 100 naira they charge you, the bank takes 50 cents. So the banks are also making money, and so they encourage you. You take 50 naira, 50 naira, they take 50 naira for every transaction. And so you find it will help us a lot. The question I ask, just to round up on my own reactions, we've not answered that last one. I don't think we have ICT people in our midst, or people listening to us. I'm very worried and concerned that we are not making impact in terms of our internet accessibility. Are we on the right bandwidth? If it works only during dry season, that's a cable band we are using. If there's a little improvement on it, it's a sea band we are using. But when you can walk, either there's rain or sunshine, and it's moving fast, or live real time is observed, you can really know, you know you are really working within the time space. Then you are in one bandwidth, and that is really the challenge. It's not changing to the 5G that should make us to become like the other one. You can change, and yes, the whole thing is like you are already putting a new wire in a gold box, or in, in a gold box, it will work. And so I'm appealing that if we want this economy to grow, if we want it to work the way we expect it, we need to work on our lights and we need to work on our internet accessibility. We bring some people, yes, we don't know we can, but it is still not enough. We had a recent embarrassment internationally, I will mention the body of what we did over the weekend, not to embarrass them here in Abuja. I was online with them, and for seven hours, we could not access the website. The server was down for seven hours, and there were people all over the world who were also booked trouble. It was around 1 a.m. when we should be sleeping. That was when the server woke up. And what how do we work? And then we'll sleep in the day when we're supposed to be in our offices. So I think we need to work hard on that to encourage us to grow. And the Anna, we are in a position to do this. We are privileged to have people who can guide you, who are here, and I believe we will all take it forward. Support those who are ready in the business and also be involved so that we will be able to grow the economy. Thank you. Uh, 
and things that all of us crave for. Why the other superstructures in the system will be doing theirs? We do ours in our little corners, and they will form the critical mass that will drive full financial inclusion. Thank you very much. Distinguished participants, President of our Institute, you all agree with me that all the presenters and discussants have dealt with this topic, this sort of thing, ethical financial inclusion for economic recovery, and everything boils down to when an angry man is standing beside us, is an, is an angry man, an hungry man is an angry man, and so when we get people out of poverty, we can be talking about financial inclusion. Let's see how we join us with the government to bring everybody out of the situation they are in, and by so doing, we have contributed to the economy recovery of the nation as professional accountants. Thank you, and this is the end of the session. My friends, gentlemen of the press, your microphones will start charging you. They haven't said that I wish to. On behalf of the President and the Council, right here, thank the Chairman of Session, the lead presenter, and the DVD discussants. The justice has already been made with this stuff thing. And I will require each and every one of us to here here to give them a very super round of applause, please. Thank you. I would therefore invite the President and Chairman of Council to please have a big handshake with the Supreme Leader and the Discussion. I therefore invite you to please come down where the President will be standing to just exchange a um, big good handshake. Will you just come down straight away? Yes. Let's start with the Chairman. Of the session, Thank you very much, man. Don't, don't get too close, please. So well and, uh, got, uh, don't, don't get too to close. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the. On behalf of uh, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, to make this presentation to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, please continue to answer each time we call on you. Thank you very much. Professor. In front of very severe pressure, Thank you very much, Dr. Slayer, for Group Head Strategic Partners of Plans Down the Lane Industries, who chair the session. There is Mark. And also the lead presenter, Francis Biology, Amar, PhD, SCA, FHI, and WA. Oh, the lead presenter. Thank you. And that's Professor Al Rosalande. The venerable prophet. And he is another. Thank you very much for this excellent academic star, Professor Anayo and Kanele. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause one more time. Thank you. Please put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. King JP.
And please still so have the responsibility of distributing it to do it professionally, orderly, so that we are not rushing. Please, as professionals, don't rush when we come to you and orderly, so that we are not jumping on anyone's head and fine hands that they will sit back and we are going to do it. So the best of our ability to observe the COVID-19 protocol. So please stay in one place and your breakfast or your tea break, your snack will get to you accordingly. Let me invite the police man to give us just quick um, relaxing melodies and then we'll take off as soon as possible. We're still in a week. Uh, Special invited guests, the President of Energy, the ministers who will be here with us, the Attorney General, sorry, the Auditor General, and the Captain General of the Federation will all be here with us quite soon. And please, again, as I keep on emphasizing, if you come to conference, ensure that you do networking, but please ensure that. Your mask are on. The police is bad. That's the one. Get your round and let's go. Thank you. Just wait a few minutes.
want to minimize the protocols, I mean the protocol rather, and those that will be recognized. Let me also just welcome other past council members that are here in our midst, in no particular order. Um, I wish to welcome His Royal Highness over George Egabo FCNA. Thank you very much, sir. Allah Haji Habu Sule FCNA. Allah Haji Muhammad Gaitan. Allah Haji Sir Ad Gore Chike. Chief Mrs. Gozawan for Mrs. John Singh Oluwata, Mr. Ahudu Hassan for Ida, Mr. Anthony Kalo, Alhadi Muhammad Bawa Maro, Alhadi Abuaka Ali Hina, and Reverend Mr. Moran Mikoka. All of them are fellow of the association. Let's please put our hands together for them. Thank you very much. And then as we move, we we'll also wish to welcome the President and Chairman of Council of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. If the President of it or his work is here, we want to acknowledge it. The President and Chairman of Council, Nigerian Institute of Management. Let me also welcome the Executive Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service or his representative. We welcome you very specially. The President and Chairman, Chartered Institute of Administration. The President and Chairman of Council, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, the President and Chairman of Council, Nigerian Baal Association, the President and Chairman of Council, Nigerian Medical Association. Thank you very much for being here. We also wish to welcome the former Governor of Kaduna State, Alahaji Dr. Mutar Ramalan Yero, FCNA. Please let's put a hands together, Sammy. You want so that we will see. Thank you. I saw you a while ago, but I wanted to be uh, very formal. I also wish to welcome Ambassador Shwaib Ahmed, Executive Secretary of the um, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. We also wish to thank Dr. Bring my paper Yuri, back. the coordinating director of representing the office. executive chairman of NIRS. We also wish to welcome World Lock EPN CNA, the director of finance and accounts, uh, representing the accountant general of the Federation of Hamdu, Mohammed the Great. I would also wish to welcome the representative of the President of the Chairman Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. I know he's representing the President but also a president in the waiting. Let's put our hands together for the Vice President of CIT and uh, our very big brother, Chief Samuel Adelui, FCTI. We thank you very much sir, for being here. Very unassuming personality, and we do hope that um, CIT will be taken to the best step. Thank you. The Chairman, the President and Chairman of Council, Chairman Minister of Forensic, and certified fraud examiners of Nigeria, hired by Anna, Dr. Iliasu Kashimbaki. Thank you very much. We are pleased to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to go through that, but it's important that we know who and who is here with us. And I've also been made to understand, but I will acknowledge it now, but when we come to that time, we acknowledge Let me welcome the chairman. Committee on Foreign Affairs, House of Federal House of Representatives, who will be or who is the chairman of the council of the conference, is a two-timer at the National Assembly. He has done so well by representing his constituency, and we're pleased to have you here, sir. With all due respect, we wish to acknowledge Right Honorable Dr. Yusuf Gubayako. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you for being here. And it's because you're doing well. That's why you're coming back again, and you'll come back again at the, the Hollow Green Chamber 
of the National Assembly. But pleased to have you here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving to the next session. And when we are done, we will move into the opening ceremony. Let me welcome Dr. Titi Lyle once again to please come forward and take charge of the proceedings of the second paper. A round of applause, celebrating this elegant woman, a woman of straight to the point. Thank you. Thank you very much. And having an existing protocol, we'll quickly go into the second session for today. I'll be talking about exploring new opportunities for nation building, ethical accountants as a strategic partner. With me this morning are three eminent personalities. Professors, I found myself in the midst of all the professors. Uh, though I'm not aspiring to be one now, but I think I'm being in infected by that uh, prof syndrome. Um, we have a little presenter, Professor Paul Adejola Adebayo, SCNA, from the Department of Accounts in National State University. We'll be taking us through the top team and we'll all be here to listen to how can we, as accountants, uh, look into the new opportunities and still ensure that we maintain the ethical standards that are expected of us. Welcome with me, Professor Paul Adejola, to make his presentation. And there are some going to that. Prof, for me, please to say that you have about 20 to 30 minutes. And can we do that? Because we are just trying to to I said that before. Accountants for a 
nation building, strategic planning tools and models for 2021 and beyond. Then we conclude. Ladies and gentlemen, nations building requires land, resources, technical know-how and opportunities. And our nation is blessed with human and natural resources. Our nation is blessed with human and natural resources. Ours is the maximization of these resources. We can see from the spring here, yeah, that is Nigeria. We have the animals, we have the soil, we have the mineral resources, we have the human capacity. But it is one thing to have this, it is a different ball game for us to be given the opportunities to perform. What is the relevance of the person who have the key to turn around things in the nation? Is not given the opportunity to get there. That's the reason I've said. To build a nation, we need resources, we need human beings, we need the technical know-how, and we need the opportunities. A nation is a group of race of people with shared history, tradition, culture, religion, and language. At the core of the concept is the issue of a common identity. So that when we work as one, as a nation, we talk about the Nigerian dream. We talk about the Nigeria of our dream. Nation building, therefore, can be seen as constructing or structuring a national identity using the powers of the state. Our population, we are talking of resources. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country with over 200 million people. By 2050, Nigeria is projected to be the world's most populous country with total population expected to exceed 400 million. The question is, what are we doing with this population? Are we taking advantage of this? Still, our youth population, half of the population in Nigeria is eight under 19 years. Youth population in Nigeria is larger than all European countries except Russia and Germany. Nigeria's young and highly entrepreneurial population present extraordinary advantages for future growth. Are we leveraging on all these we have in our nation? As at 3, 15 a.m. today, Tuesday, September 6, 2021, based on odometer, elaboration of the latest UN data, Nigeria is the seventh most populous country in the world, with a population of 212 million, 461,392. It is also Africa's most populous country. Nigeria currently accounts for 20% of sub saharan Africa's population and 2.64% of the total world population. See our demography as shown in the graph here. Here are the resources we have here. Going to Abia, Abuja, nation any state in the country. We have rich resources, natural resources, but not tapped. We have great talents in our nation. There's the opportunity for these talents to maximize their potential, to bring about the Nigeria of our dream is not here. We have our talents. I will mention just a few of them. We are talking of human resources, natural resources, and the opportunities given to them to make for nation building. We have the late renowned mathematician, Jay Chiki Obir, who saw Pama 200 year old conjecture with pencil and paper, while the Cambridge mathematician, John Wills, 
as you say, with the help of a computer working over a decade. And that is one of the reasons I keep saying it. Black is not synonymous to lack. No matter the color of the skin of a man, the color of the brain is the same. What men struggle to go and get abroad doesn't really come from abroad, it comes from abroad. And we have such men in this nation that God has deposited what it takes to turn around the economy. But where are the opportunities for such one? Victor Lamsi recently graduated with such stellar performance at Russian Medical Research University in Moscow and was rated the best graduate throughout the Russian Federation. Adiva Dagash, daughter of Senator Sanusti Dagash, graduated with a stellar first class in engineering at Oxford University. Where are these ones? And coming back home, we have who for Elkhorn, who recently saw a 50 year mathematical review at Tokai University in Japan and was voted the most outstanding graduate of the institution? We have Emmanuel, who earned a GP of 3.98 out of a possible 4.0 as the best overall graduate of the Ivy League John Austin University. And a professor described him. As a young man having an internet so rare that he touches on the unique, a personality that is born in a lifetime. And here, not far fetched, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. We have an accounting icon with name, Reverend Colonel Professor Benjamin Osisioma, who graduated with a first class in accounting from the University of Nigeria, Nsuka. With over 45 of his supervisees elevated to the rank of professor, selected as Man of the Year by American Biographical Institute in 2001, listed in the Director of Outstanding 2000 Intellectuals of the 21st Century, and his contributions to the advancement of the science of accountancy in Nigeria abroad and not be denied. Yet, he took a past president, seated here this morning. To see the need for this uh, president to be in the council and today the president and chairman of council of this association. So today, Nigerian doctors, scientists, and engineers are making massive contributions in Europe, North America, and Asia, our brightest and best led abroad. If our system were not so harsh to talent, we will be celebrating a bountiful harvest of geniuses in all the fields of human endeavor. We punch literally below our weight in the hierarchy of war, economics, and politics. None of our institutions come near the top 1,000 in the world university league table. Even the one who said the best in Nigeria is not among the first 1,000 globally in terms of ranking. An estimated for 7.3% all 98 million of our people live in abject poverty. Youth unemployment over around 55.4%. The poverty is heartbreaking. And like I had during the first presentation, an hungry man is an angry man. An empty bar cannot stay upright. We cannot say we are living in a nation where this magnitude of population are living in abject poverty. Our per capita GDP is less than $2,900 as compared to Singapore's $58,902. We have bad road carnage record in the world with more than 20,000 lost for road accidents annually. 18 billion wasted on power, leadership in attitude, corruption, incompetence, lack of political will, economic mismanagement, lack of diversification, nepotism, Proper planning, terrorism, insecurity, lack of unity, religious intolerance, disregard for rule of law, and lack of entrepreneurial acumen are among the challenges that is hindering our march into greatness as a nation. But the question is, what is the way out? New opportunities. In employing new opportunities for nation building, it is important to know that no society is challenge free 
as a matter of fact, challenges are champions daily menu. Some people don't believe the day is complete until they have one challenge or the other. They have come. It is when we face challenges and we overcome these challenges that we are called champions. The nations we have today that Nigeria has want to travel to, we are not built by those, they are built by men. And for Nigeria also, to be an envy among a community of nations, opportunities should be given to individuals, to human beings, to professionals, ethical professionals. And that is where the accountant will come in. Because no matter the beauty of our plan to build our nation without resources, I talk of resources now, without money, the capital is the epitome of a tool. That is, money is the language of business. And when we need money to build the nation, the accountant comes in. Not just accountants, the ethical accountants. New opportunities for nation building. We have career opportunities. Career opportunities. We have business opportunities. We have corporate transformations. Governmental advantage. Professional opportunities. Educational transformations. Transformation in the health system. New discoveries and innovations slash technological advancement, then investment opportunities. And if I take the first one, say career opportunities. What are the new opportunities available to us in nation building? There is increase in robotic manufacturing, smart companies and automation organizations, creating a high demand for information technological skills now. Somebody put it this way. He said, there yeah, is nothing called dry place. There are only dry men. What is the interpretation of this? If one has all the resources, you have all the money, and there is no idea, if you are put in a place full of abundance, you will not know what to do with it. So it takes insight. No wonder Ellen Keller, a blind and deaf woman, said, the great tragedy in life is to have eyes, they lack sight. Somebody else put it another way. He said, a great tragedy in life is not that a man dies, but what dies in a man while he lives. Potentials to waste it because opportunities to perform are not created. Becoming digital professional present great promises for nation building. That is to be accountant now become digital accountant. And as you become a digital accountant, your relevance will not only be in the shores of Nigeria, but it will be global. What others are looking for will be looking for you. Career opportunities, counseling, psychology job will be on the increase. That's another area we can explore. I demand for headquarters and paramedical. Business opportunities, and the opportunities we get from business include people can also get into business that help companies plan and execute remote working as a form of business process transformation. I have demand for hardware, software, mobile devices, and accessories. The opportunities are there. It takes us to see this opportunity. As businesses increasingly work remotely, there is a surge in the demand for hardware, devices, and others to make their model succeed. Production and selling of personal protection equipment. Whereas our own focus is import, import, import. There is opportunity for us also to build the producer, to build the manufacturer of some of these products. Business opportunity, increase in e-commerce and online retail. More business automation will mean more demand for companies in the business automation trade for the foreseeable future. Increase in demand for daily products and daily care. Investment in cyber security controls and safety of companies' data and 
three verses. Also, the material for audio, e-books, and video recordings. These are some business opportunities available for nation building. What about corporate transformation? In the corporate world, the money companies are going to retain remote or home working and new companies. We adapt it. Now most companies or many companies are working remotely. They still pay their salary as a wedding. And that's why the fact that people don't come to office practically, they still do their work. I give a very good example. I said during the COVID, and not only because of COVID, COVID, we have some of our staff of maternity, and I discover the people working from home even contribute significantly to the growth of the organization more than the people who come physically to the office. It's not all about effectiveness, it is efficiency. Governmental advantages, more homegrown groups, and we move towards self-reliance. These are opportunities. How do we begin to create or manufacture our homemade goods? Made in Nigeria. Some people even make more of some goods made in Nigeria products. This one is made in here, this one is fake. It is from the fake one that will graduate into the authentic and genuine one. Then diversification and development of non oil sectors. Focus on the health sector, more funding into healthcare and research. Changes and review of laws and legal frameworks to accommodate the new normal and business operation. Professional opportunities, that's the one for you and me. Technologically skilled professionals will be in high demand. That is, being in an era generally referred to as era of digital that we need to this is not the time we shy away from the use of technology. Technology paved way not only in this nation, every other place in the world. I say in the developed nations, what they focus on now mostly is skills acquisition and what you can do, not certificates. To remain relevant in the new era, professionals must be digital and if you go digital. There are still professional opportunities. Tax and income planning consultancy. Now that the Federal Inland Revenue have launched, not only launched, they are using the tax programs. This is the time, the opportunity open for professional accountants to also learn the relevant skills and become consultants to tax payers in this area. For level practitioners, there is going to be an increase over related level disputes. Then, educational transformation. We talk of opportunities for us is access to online programs, open courses, e-learning platform, and the likes. Then transformation and innovations, technological advancement. Emergence of AI tools in the market, that is another area to be explored for nation building. Demand for applications that enable remote working, conferencing, and remote learning. Virtual sports, entertainment, events, and activities will increase. Event planners can plan remote or virtual parties. Investment opportunities. In the area of investment, emphasis will be more on investment and entrepreneurship rather than salary jobs. There's a language they use, they say salary, salary is the low last line. That before the salary will come, it is gone. This is the time we need to discover the great potentials inside of us and maximize these potentials. We have investment in TPD, investment in stock market, investment in real estate, Investment of multi-level marketing companies, investment in 21st century business like cryptocurrency and blockchain. The ethical accountants, the 
because of time, who is an ethical accountant? An ethical accountant is that professional who abides by the rules and regulations guiding the profession. And one of such rules is integrity. An ethical accountant will be a professional with integrity. Integrity is the hallmark of professionalism. If you are a professional with integrity, your year will be your year, and your year will be your name. We have independence. That is, the ethical accountant is not influenced by anything at all. I share this experience in 2010. I was privileged to be a member of the presidential visitation panel asked to go and carry out the investigation of the capital allocation to federal universities in Nigeria. The summary is this. Discover a lot of anomalies. There is no leisure maintained for students. And yet they pay their school fees instrumentally. In the million era, there is no supporting documents. Are you done? Then another year, so from 100 million giving as cash advances to a staff. No trace of retirement. A year after, we saw the same amount acquisition of fixed assets. The irrespective of what this university did, that we will not permit you to have like five minutes or long. At the end of the exercise, the end justified the needs. We reported the way we found it. Failure to remain independent may hamper and accountants are needed to provide an honest opinion about the company's financial information. We're talking about independence. Accountant is expected to exercise due care and also have competence in doing what they have been trained to do. Professional responsibilities. Ethical accountants expected to add value in the accounting profession and take up responsibility. Public interest. Ethical accountant is expected to act in the interest of the public. Professional skills. That is why the confidentiality of information expected of ethical accountants. Fundamental accounting skills. You are a professional accountant. Some basic things you need to do or you are expected to do yourself. You cannot. An ethical accountant will have the skill to interpret financial statements. We have softwares that will prepare for those financial statements. The ethical accountant to have the skills to interpret them. Professionality and their mature is expected of the ethical accountant. Honesty standards, honesty similar to integrity. That is, an ethical accountant will be honest to the core in their dealings. Objectivity. Another ethics, expected of it, strategic planning. When we talk about strategic planning, it is a long term plan of an organization to know where they are, where they desire to be in years after, and how to get to their desired destination. And how is the accountant coming in here? One of the definitions of accounting is the accounting is an economic information system that leads to the transformation of economic data useful in decision making. It is a means which enables management, business executives, government, decision makers to know where they are coming from, where they are, where they desire to be, and how to arrive at their destination. By implication, accounting is past looking, present looking, and future looking. And any nation that you can say people are envying today, those nations are built with resources, both human and natural resources. An accountant is the custodian or the keeper of the treasury. Where integrity is missing, where there is no honesty, where there is no planning, then our pattern will be the 
that audience of God's nation. Truth in the hands of the ethical accountant for nation building. Budget and budget control, corporate governance, transparency, professionalism and updated skills, preparation of timely financial reports, cost saving expertise, ability to fight corruption, rendering of financial services, investment appraisal function, strategic planning and implementation, optimal level operation. Economic integration tools. I will go and conclude. We have some strategic planning tools. Please visit www.anlandescpd.org.ng. That is the ESCPD platform. There are some of these tools that you can download from there. You can also visit www.accsa global. We have all these planning, strategic planning tools. One of them is SWOT. Then we have the best analysis tool. We also have the objectives and key results. And we have the last one, balance score. Cut. All these four, you see the tools on this website I've just mentioned. In conclusion, there is barely any area of nation building we look at that does not involve funds. Hence, the relevance of accountants in the judicious allocation of the funds. As a strategic planner, the tools in his hand in exploring and successfully implementing new opportunities for nation building are germane in having a vision of our dream. As a strategic planner, the ethical accountant is expected to know ahead and see ahead to enable him be the head. With professional ethics and strategic planning tools in his disposal, the ethical accountant has the potential to transform a landlocked country creating coastal waters to become a powerful state like Israel. It can transform a country like Japan, devastated by World War II and devoid of natural resources, to become a leading industrialized nation. It has the potential to combat a desert into an oasis and a world-class tourist destination and international financial center like the UAE. The ethical accountant does what it takes to make a country transit from third world to first within 20 to 30 years, like Singapore. It can transform a country from a backwater commodity exporting country to become one of Asia Tiger economies like Malaysia. The greatest need of the world today is the need of men. Men who can neither be bought nor sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who are true to duty as the needle to the poor. Men who will stand for the truth even though the heavens fall. Our earnest prayer is that God should give us such professionals whose yea will be yea and whose nay will be nay. We are the light the world is waiting for to be our light on the darkness bedeviling our nation. We are the source the nation is waiting for to preserve it from decades. The world is awaiting our manifestations as the custodians and managers of the treasuries. Professional colleagues, do not expire before you explode. Thank you for your attention.
I want to speak to you. If you are here, you are an accountant. I want to believe all of us are. I want to speak to the person beside you and tell the person, know ahead. And see ahead. So that you can be the head. I'm taking this away from here, if nothing else. So we are supposed to know ahead as strategic planners and to see ahead so we can be the head in our various organizations. I want to welcome again to the podium Dr. William Elliot for his session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for profound respect to uh, the leadership of this great association. May I stand on the existing protocol? Or is it used in furthering the hegemonic interests of particular interest groups 
and individuals because as far as I'm concerned, uh, nation building, uh, the proportion of responsibility for nation building disproportionately rests on the state, even though the followers also have a role to play. A key object for nation building is greater integration of state and society, where subjects become citizens, and citizenship results in loyalty, national identity, integrity, and social opportunity. Are these sample, the second question is, are these sample objectives reflective of Nigeria in its present state? It is apparent that neighbor has this country is so divided along ethnic lines, tribal and religious lines as we have had in our recent times. So, the paper plays the access of nation building not only in the last six years to so lack of executive capacity and political will to build national unity, fight and eradicate poverty, corruption, insecurity, underdevelopment, discrimination, which has hitherto created a deep well of discontent among the citizenry of the country. So an understanding of where we are correctly will compare the great appreciation of the demands of ethical accountants in nation building. So, the author surmises that it was a costly mistake. Please, I want to pause here to um, uh, just punctuate this. Um, part of what my professional colleague has uh, presented, I think uh, there are so many additions to that, to that, uh, that um, if you compare what has been presented to the paper we originally received, which we worked on me and my fellow uh, discussant, it does appear that there are lots of improvements on that, so I'm working basically on what uh, was given originally. So he surmises that it was a costly mistake as independence and has been a recovery this far, even as of today. Okay, let me go back because there is a question he raised here. Now, in Nigeria's first foundation building, the paper criticizes the founding fathers for abandoning the task of nation building for region building. And my question is, I have thought that the basic cause for restructuring re-echoes the fact that there is no other period in Nigeria's political and developmental past than the immediate post-independence period when Nigeria practiced true federalism, where every region developed according to their comparative economic and political advantage. So, I'm not in the same page with the paper presenter as far as that is concerned. So, my uh, hope is that the paper presenter should be kind enough to please adopt on that. I will be better off now than we hear some, uh, especially the first. Republic. So these are the role of ethical accountants in nation building. The paper has tried to follow nation building rules to the ethical accountants. They should be masters of the principles of debit and credit, credit, facilitating access to capital, combating efficiency, supporting the fight against corruption. Should also have this as an objective development of the growth agenda of the country. Maximizing government uh, government's revenue, strong governance of compliance procedures, uh, transforming government businesses and enterprises, and also to enhance financial uh, literacy. In pursuit of all objective, the ethical accountant must be guided by the rules of professional ethics of the accounting profession set out uh, uh, set out below integrity standards and all of that. Let me quickly go to my own interventions and reflections so we can quickly wrap up. The subject and object of nation building is one that involves both the leaders and the led. It is true, as pointed out by the author, that a disproportionate role is reserved for the state. This is because the state is that other society entrusted to oversee and coordinate individual and disparate interests for the purpose of forging a collective agenda for the good of all. The state in doing this is imbued with the overriding powers of coercion and the authority to manage Nigeria's commonwealth for the overall benefit of all. 
Thus, there exists a twofold burden on different collectives within the nation. The function of nation building to be discharged by the followers and the order to be discharged by states and its agents. Put differently, the process of nation building must be approached from two complementary perspectives the micro and the macro. It is the former, the micro, that claims our attention in this paper. The ethical accountant's impact on nation building proceeds at the micro level, right in the solemn presence of his office, where the books are to be evaluated, where his objective assessment on the twin principles of debit and credit in accord with it. It is at this level that the nation is either built or destroyed, built or destroyed in installments marginally until the international edifice grows into a sprawling industrial nation like the Asian Tigers of Singapore, Taiwan, and Malaysia, or is on the brink, brink of collapse like the potential chance of developing countries in Africa like Nigeria. Now, recent corporate history of developed nations provide concrete examples of how unethical accountant can destroy a nation. The collapse of Enron and the role of its auditor, Otto Anderson and company, have already the weak underbelly of the accounting profession and question the profession's capacity to provide critical building block for nation building at the micro level. Investors, including thousands of Enron employees, poured billions of dollars into Enron as they reported strong profits only to see their stock dwindle to nearly nothing and missed doubt about the reliability of the company's financial statements. So, we are now saying, as I close, where did it all start? It started when the ethical accountant threw overboard the ethics that regulate proper professional conduct. At the heart of every corporate failure is individual and collective greed, which translates in a discipline spirally into the economy. Nation building is compromised in the process. So, ladies and gentlemen, the paper presenter will incorporate these thoughts into the revised version of the paper, especially the real examples of corporate collapse culminating in compromised nation building. Thank you so very much for listening.
Our role of the Yusuf Bouvet Group, Chairman House Committee on Foreign Affairs and Congress Chairman, Reverend Canon Professor Benjamin Tuka Osisioma, FCAA, President and Chairman of Council and Dr. Nouruddin Abba Abdullahi, MNI, SCNA, Chief Executive Officer of ANA, Council Member, Distinguished Fellows, and Members of the Accounting Profession, Professor Ebu Yu Ebu, Special uh, Director, Entrepreneurship and Development Center, the Bonnie State University, and the keynote speaker, Distinguished Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I consider it an honor to be here today at the 26th Annual National Conference of the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, and taking place in our national capital city. On behalf of the SDP administration and all the residents of the SDP, I welcome all the delegates and distinguished guests who have journeyed to Abuja to attend this yearly gathering of some of Nigeria's best and brightest accounting professionals. Permit me to begin by congratulating and for holding this 26th annual conference and also for sustaining the highest standards of the accounting profession, both as trainers and also as practicing professionals for 28 years since it was started in 1993. The annual conference, I am informed, is a veritable platform that affords members of the association, policy makers, captains of industry, and investors to interact and deliberate on matters of importance to not just the accounting profession, but also the nation building as well. This is highly commendable, taking into cognizance critical functions that accountants and indeed the accounting profession play in the social and economic advancement of education. The theme for this year's conference, which is strategic options for economic recovery, the role of the accountant, is not only very under the leadership of President Mohammed Buhari, who is working as serious and professional antecedents of the distinguished individuals here gathered. I am without doubt that innovative and worthwhile recommendations would be made to aid the government in its task of consolidating Nigeria's economic growth and prosperity. Here in the FCC, we are committed to ensuring the professional integrity of all our employees and have encouraged our accountants to take advantage of the opportunities provided by ANA to upgrade their knowledge and qualification. I once more welcome you to the SCT and wish you a successful annual conference. Thank you for your valued attention and may God bless us all. Sign Muhammad Musa Right, thank you very much, round of applause to the SCT Minister, every representative at Mama Muhammad Bashir Main Forum, the Chief of Staff to the Honorable Minister SCT. Thank you. Please, can we have uh, our president exchanging the hands of fellowship? And of course, appreciate the Honorable Minister. And say you have done well, continue to do more. And we do hope that uh, our conference will not coincide with the engagement of the Honorable Minister next year, and we'll be here in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause one more time, Honorable Minister and the President exchanging pleasantries. Thank you. 
We have two conditions that the president will take. We will honk us of concluding the session. Once we conclude this session, we will take the opening ceremony, please. We are down to the second paper. After this, we will go to the official opening ceremony. Mr. Chair, it is your turn. Please, let's keep the time and exhaust the second discussion. And then, if there are no questions, we will move them into the opening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just hope uh, we're going to be flowing with the session. So we quickly save our time and we go into the second discussion. I have the pleasure of calling Professor Joseph Okyong Udoyan, SCNA, to take us through his own thoughts about the session. Sir, we have five minutes. Please help us to do justice. The President and Chairman of Council, the Secretary of Sound, the Secretary We are talking about exploring new opportunities for the nation to build ethical accountants as a new plan. We want to look into who is this person we are calling ethical accountants. He said that this person or the that person who has that technical training and proficiency as an accountant. It must be somebody that has that independence in all matters relating to this job that is doing as an accountant must be independent. The third thing is that this person we call ethical accountant must be that person while doing his job must in service with all due professional care in carrying out his duty. And while doing this, we say that the resource providers, government, investors, put in resources into business. The business enterprises, agencies who run the business. And what are they looking for? To be able to plan, to be able to put the nation in order, they need the information. And who is to provide this information? It is the professional accountants who is preparing a financial statement. And the financial statement will be in line with the standards. And when it is in line with the standard, we say that one, he has to obtain evidence. He has to make sure that there is internal control put in place. And of course, we have to move into the internal control components that there must be environment. There must be risk assessment. There must also be monitoring, information and communication and the existing procedures put in place. So, we want to look into this. The first presenter has presented a paper and put and defined a nation as a people with common destiny. We don't want to go into that and has also talk about the social and consulting. And we have all those things, the powers, the strategy, the capacity of the state institution, the union and the development. Integrating the society into the state, making the subject to be real citizens. And we talk about the growing concept, the continuity concept of a nation is threatened by challenges. And what are the challenges? The sources of building. The success of building a nation is threatened. We also look at the success, we look at the, the influencers. What are the influencers? What are those things that influences the ethical accountants? We talk about your professional skills and competence. You must be competent. 
Now, for course, said why? Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Please check my request. Could you do us a favor and not tamper with the um, what we have here? It's affecting the public address system. So, I wish to thank. The chairman of session, the paper presenter, and the discussant. The president is already outstanding to appreciate us. So please, may you kindly move down and have a good handshake with the president. Please, you have questions on this paper, which I know you are easy to ask. Write down, and at the right time, we'll take them uh, because we'll bring an opportunity to have some of those questions answered. Let me invite um, the paper, the lead presenter, please come down. And have a handshake with the president. <laughs> you are a regular pastor. Huh? You didn't disappoint us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you set the hall on fire. <laughs> and let me invite the discussion to please also come forward. Chair President of the Yes, sir. I'm sure we'll call you again. Thank you. It was so encouraging. It was so Congratulations. We are being very ethical to appreciate you. A good accountant, an ethical accountant, must be appreciated. Thank you very much. A good gesture. That's what I'm learning. A round of applause. Thank you. Yes, Chairman. Um, you were given a handshake because handshakes would be so many. I can give you my handshake. Thank you very much. I tap from the Chairman's hands. She has chaired two of the functions and of the sessions, and I think you are not tired yet. You will chair maybe to the end of the conference. Put your hands together for her one more time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If I sit that close to someone, just by observing COVID-19 protocol, don't shake, they just turn to your left. Or your right and smile to a neighbor. Hello. Just smile. Just smile. Smile. Just smile. I hope you have smiled to your neighbors. In the spirit of COVID-19 protocol, I would have asked you to shake or give him or have him, he or she a bus. But I would need to be mindful of it. So your smiling resonates a lot of things. Thank you. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go 
over to the very informal and official way that conference days would have the open, I mean the open ceremony, the conference, yes, it has started, but it needs to be declared over. Irrespective of the Honorable Minister's being in attendance or not, we have one number one accountant in the house that can declare even the word conference or conference. And that is the president of the So never mind. Let me quickly just go through a quick protocol that I'm not going to really release so much. Already the president of Anna, I wish to acknowledge him and I will not particularly be mentioning the council members because I have done it already. So just for the purpose of those who want to speak, for the purpose of protocol, though the president is not here, but we know that anyway the president and um, Commander in Chief of the Federal Forces of Nigeria is, is the number one person at that event, present or absent. So we thank the President and his Vice President very specially. Let's put our hands together for the number one and number two citizen of this country to have even given the permission for this function to go ahead. We've also heard from the speech a good message from the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Allah Muhammad Musa Bello. Thank you very much for attending and in their representative capacity. We'd also be made to understand that Dr. Mr. Zaina Shamsun Ahmed, FCNA, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Money, ought to have been here. But I, I've been made to understand she's on our way, or if we get a representative, we acknowledge very responsibly. So let me quickly and specially again acknowledge the President and Chairman of Council of Anand, who is the host of this event, Reverend Canon Professor Benjamin Chuka for Sisi of an SCNA, a round of applause for our President. I would also wish to formally acknowledge the keynote speaker at this conference, Professor Ebu Ebu, Ebu is the from Avery State University, we've already about it, we've already acknowledged him. But he is a foremost academic. He was at one time the Deputy Vice Chancellor, and we're happy to have him in our presence as a keynote speaker. A roundabout of us, please. Let's put our hands together. Let me also, in a very special, formal way, acknowledge the chairman of conference. The 26th Conference of Anna, holding here at the Center of the Universe and in the International Conference of Abuja, acknowledge and welcome Honorable Dr. Yusuf Bouba Yakubu, the Chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs and Federal of the Federal House of Representatives. Right, Honorable, please. A round of applause for you. And also, let me acknowledge. All the council members are happy, in, and we acknowledge before our view of that protocol, and every one of you here are collectively welcome again at the opening ceremony. Let's put our hands together for all the members of the council. And let me also quickly, um, as also acknowledging before, the Chief Executive Officer of Manan, Dr. Norodin Abba, Lai, MNI, SCNA. Thank you very much for being here. And also, I acknowledge the past presidents before, and I just want to especially thank you all. But when I did that, um, a very dear one wasn't around. Um, Mr. Anthony Chukwe Mecca Zon, FCNA, he had to take his seat, but he has now um, come and he's on his seat. So you're welcome, sir. Let's go and stand up for him and the rest of the members of the past presidents. Past registrars that we have in attendance of blessed memory, we must please on record. Late Sir Dr. Peter Steele Ibegwe, SCNA, who have clap for the heavens up there today. Thank you very much. Let me acknowledge Chief Peter I, the man in SCNA, who was a registrar of Anna from 2009 to 2013. If he's around, let him rise so that I'll put a hand Thank you, he's very much there. Thank you, the golden boy of Allah. And also Dr. Sonny A. Kunen, an accomplished
church administrator. He's right there. Please put your hands together for that gentleman by Exxon. The Director General of Nigerian College of Accountancy, Kuali, Kuali, near just. I'm talking about no other person but Dr. Kyrie O. Fashua, FCA. Let's put our hands together for him. I'm sure he is the administrator of the Kuali. And past Directors General that are here, um, Professor Jane Motuka Andy, we thank you. You have already discussed the paper. Dr. Joseph Fleming and Davis CNA, thank you very much to have um, I noted the affairs. Um, Mr. Benjamin and Jennifer, um, and then Professor Amos Okori. If I hear, sir, we want to acknowledge this person. Of course, we acknowledge Dr. Ekuni. Uh, also, not forgetting that Prof. I mean, Reverend Canon Professor Benjamin Steele Steelman, at some point, at one time, was also the Director General. Thank you, and also Mambo Peters Esquire. We thank you very much for all being here. So, ladies and gentlemen, having discharged our protocol, I will acknowledge others who are not necessarily members, but I also acknowledge all the the SCNAs. Let me acknowledge all the branch chairmen of Ananda that here. Please rise if I hear you a branch chairman of any of the Anand branches. Please, will you rise again? Just rise. In your specific order, you're welcome. All accountant generals and auditor generals of states, are you here? I have one. Mr. Akinola Olushola Olaruaju, auditor general for local government for your state. And all other big shots of the states that we have, we thank you. Your Excellency, the one time of the state and SNA, SNA was here, but I believe you understand he just stepped up. He will join us very soon. So let me just reach this, and also please on record the President and Chairman of Council, Institute of Chapter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. Are you here? Let's put a hands together for them. The President and Chairman of Council, uh, Chairman East of Bankers of Nigeria. The President and Chairman of Council Chair Insurance Institute of Nigeria. We invited them. And also the President and Chairman of Council uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Are you here? I am. Assistable. Thank you very much. Having said this, we will also acknowledge every Member of Anna that is here, I acknowledge that, I mean all of you at the beginning, and all non members who are here registered for the conference. My friends, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you very formally to the opening ceremony of the 26th annual conference of Anna. Please, if you love yourself the way I love mine, Put your hands together for yourselves. Thank you very much. And let me appeal to those who are behind and those who are outside who actually did come to conference and came to have photographs. Please, this is a serious business. And we urge you to please maintain some silence out there so that those who came for conference will concentrate. I also wish to announce that there are a lot of sitting spaces at the gallery and we will expect that everyone at the table conference, there's a seat meant for you. You don't need to stand behind, you don't need to make noise behind, you don't need to be outside. Please come inside and the, the protocol officers or the ushers as they are called will lead you to your seat within the sitting arena. Thank you for doing this. Otherwise, if I'm behind and you're distracted, that is not too far. Your Excellency, you're welcome back to your seat. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, may we all rise as patriotic Nigerians to say we love Nigeria for the first stanza of the national anthem. The British band, you want to lead us. Otherwise, I love Nigerians to sing with their voices. 
but I think the man will stop.
Nemenevo, FDNA. The immediate past president of Anna, the Gagi of Nasarawa, Bombe Bauchi, and so on and so forth, Professor Mohammed Akaru Menoma, MNI, FDNA. The national treasurer of Anna, my student, Dr. Ibrahim Awea Gopika, SPNA, the new Chief Secretary of Anna, Hadi Ibrahim Hussein, Hidalgo, SPNA, all other members of Council of Anna here present, the Chief Executive Officer of Anna, Dr. Ukin Abba Abdullah, NMI, NMI, SPNA. The Grand Chairman of ANA, all fellows of ANA, members of ANA, and all Chairmen of ANA committees, Chairman of today's occasion, that is the Chairman, Conference Chairman, Honorable Dr. Yusuf Buba Yaku, Chairman House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Federal House of Representatives, the keynote speaker, Professor Ebu Yu Ebu, Ebu Nisteke Obaki Abakaleke, Chairman of Anam, past president Dr. Samuel O. Nisteke, SPNA, and of course, Chairman Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, our mommy, Hatia Maria Lad Ibrahim, SPNA. I must recognize her as part of the regime. That's why I have to mention this name. All other past presidents here present. President of Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria. We refer to him as President of Presidents because he is the President of all professional bodies, APDM. So, they are Akin Oyebola, President of our sister state, sister bodies, Icon and CIPA, our past registrar, Director General of Nigeria College of Accountants, Kayode Paswa, past Director General, the Vice Chancellor Anna University, Professor Inua Kodio, the President and Chairman of Council Chartered Institute of Forensic and Certified Crowd examiners of Nigeria, Dr. Iliasu Gashimaki, the rapporteurs, the chairman of the rapporteurs, Dr. Kayode Pastua, SPNA, my colleagues and members of the association, without whom this event wouldn't have called, members of conference, workshop, and publicity committee, the plans of the 2021 conference. All Anna staff, all Anna staff of the college, all Anna staff of the university, the chairman, military pension board, Nidhi Komodo, Saburi, Abayomi Lawan, Every represented by Mr. O. O. Mm -hmm. The security agency, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the 26th annual conference of Anna and of course the 2021 Fellowship Award. 
may I now crave the indulgence of the great to allow me to invite all the members of the conference committee to come out for recognition. May I invite the members of the conference workshop and publicity committee to come out for recognition. Please be fast. While they are coming, I would have taken the modalities for the 2021 conference, but because of time, I will create your indulgence to go through it in the program and see the lineup of activities.
viable option in the national search for economic recovery. As an unbranded accountant, we should think and act strategically and provide moral based leadership to lead in this search for recovery. This role and how to execute it is part of the focus of this year's conference. The first top team points an ethical accountant as a strategic planner who should be entrepreneur in understanding the emerging opportunities accompanying changing operating environment. The second something recognizes the imperative of economic recovery strategy that covers a broad spectrum of the society, including traditionally marginalized groups such as women and those at the bottom of the pyramid. The third doctrine considers public growth a critical imperative in the highly connected yet increasingly physically distant world. Therefore, the accountant must aid the public trust if accounting information must guide economic recovery decisions. Thus, addressing the challenges that inflame this role is crucial. Finally, the fourth something hopes to share perspectives in wealth creation, emphasizing the option that last, which favor morally based options. We have put in place every necessary logistics to guarantee a successful conference. The conference officials and members of the conference can be identified by their tasks and as shown here. Feel very free to contact any of us for anything to make this conference enjoyable. We also solicit your cooperation by observing COVID-19 and other protocols as may be required. We thank the council through the president and chairman of council for giving us this opportunity to start the association in this capacity. Please relax, enjoy, and the best experience of this workshop. Thank you and God bless. I was wondering why, when my chairman said he will give her own welcome address, and I had some bit of murmuring. No, if she had to welcome us, we may not be comfortable. So all she did was to please it on record all that she had reached out in the course of planning this. So even if time was taken, I think it was taken for good. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's put our hands together for the chairman of this conference, of the um, conference workshop and Community. Thank you very much, um, Haja. We're so pleased to have you. Let me, before I take the next item, let me quickly acknowledge the representative of um, ICANN President Honorable Nasser Mohammed, FCA. Please sir, can you rise so that um, we will see where you are seated. Let's put a hands together for him. He's right there. Thank you very much. Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, we're pleased to have you. We also want to please on record that the professional women accountants in Nigeria are fully represented here. And honestly, the leadership is over here. I wish to acknowledge Princess Mrs. 
ajal IEUs. How do we become agile as a profession? Dynamic, smart, ready to go, proactive. And the other one is future ready accountants. Accountants who are groomed to prepare for the future. These are the challenges of today. And each time we meet like this, we will challenge ourselves. We will design to break new grounds. We will hope for new, uh, uh, ex no, new highlights. This year's conference team, therefore, touches on a very important spot, looking at the strategic options our nation has for economic recovery. While we challenge that, so far the papers have not disappointed me. I've been very excited at how we have taken off the very first two papers of the day at the discussions. The discussions have so ably uh, uh, I saw every national their points, and I hope that if you're here, you will learn something. There are every day keynote speaker, Professor Ibu Uyuebu, who sat beside me. Then he commented, he said, I'm learning so many things here. I too am learning so many things here. And uh, I'm happy that uh, our people are really putting these things together in order to make us the, be the best we can be. May I, on behalf of the association, Sincerely thank you, Your Excellency, Alayi Fontaine Riero. Thank you for agreeing, not just to be here. Many people in your position think they have grown beyond Anna, but he has never done that. Even at the Kaduna State, he identifies with the association. We thank you, Your Excellency. We thank the Minister of Federal Capital Territory. When we were in his office, we pleaded with him to come for this conference. He couldn't come, but he sent his chief of staff. We deeply thank him. We always dare to look on him as a friend. We also want to thank the CEO of PAFA, Pan African Federation of Accountants, who will be addressing this conference tomorrow. I'm talking of uh, Alta Prince should be speaking to us via uh, satellite, via Zoom, and I uh, thank her for accepting that responsibility. And I also salute everyone, particularly those that serve and still serve as chairman of conference and workshops committee and members of the committee. I sincerely thank the committee chair, Hadia Kishini, and I'm vice president for our dedication, passion. And coordination in ensuring a successful conference. I call her at any hour of the day. At times I'll be wondering how can she be up by this time? Eleven, past eleven, she will answer. And I say, Are you sleeping? She said, I'm not here asleep. And she monitored every step. And we're here. We thank her for all of them. I want to thank all the professional bodies who attended here. All our friends in government. All who have shown that they care for what we are doing here. God will show his care concerning your business. He will lift you beyond where you are. He will raise you and he will bless your seed. He will cause you to be celebrated by your generation. That's our prayer. Thank you very much. And thank you for your kind attention. Somebody like me grew up, 
I want to be like you, sir. The way you speak really comes with volumes of everything that you want to have in every speech. What you have said in a couple of few minutes encapsulate your entire speech that is there in the brush. It is a sincere hope that will continue to run in as a professional organization and I hope we'll make ourselves proud. Ladies and gentlemen, let's salute our president without encapsulating a well educated speech. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and thank you indeed. It reminds me again when the president was speaking of an encounter I had with a friend of mine. He was owing me 40,000, he owed me money, 40,000 man. He only paid me 5,000 man. For about two years, I was begging this man to pay me my balance. He said, no, if you pay today, you will be poor. One day, I was so broke and I beckoned on him that please, you should give me, even if it is 30,000 and remain the 5,000 with him. He said, well, Ross, you know, times are hard. I have 17,000 area as my cash balance that I've done. I will give you only 15,000 naira. As you can see, I said, well, half rate is better than none. If you can give me 17, you at least 15, you'll be only 20 small small out for that. So it was late in the evening, so I slept. When I woke up, I saw about 25 missed calls from this my friend. And what did he say? I just reluctantly say, okay. Then looking at my own text messages, I saw an alert of 150,000 man. Hello. If now you're not going to say, God, thank you. You know what happened? He typed one five and mistakenly added four zeros. This is somebody saying he had 15,000 man. And then he kept calling me. Then when I called him, he said, John, you know you are my good friend. Can you please send me back the balance of that one fifty and keep the entire money that I've been owing you? Ladies and gentlemen, you are a good Christian. You are a good Muslim. If you are in my shoes, what would you do? Don't ask me what I did. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll take up the next item and I will need to salute the chairman of conference. Let's welcome Honorable Dr. Yusuf Buba Yakubo. Right Honorable Dr. Yusuf Buba Yakubo, the Chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Federal House of Representatives, who has been representing his constituents very well. And indeed, today, he is the Chairman of the 26th Conference of Honor. So, we'll be pleased to hear from you. Let's put our hands together for the chair. Thank you very much, everybody.
who without any shred of doubt have come from far and near. Let me on a special note also convey my warmest thanks to the chairman and members of the governing council and indeed the management of this distinguished association, Anna, who curiously have chosen a political scientist and member of parliament, my very humble self, to chair the opening ceremony of this 26th annual conference of your very celebrated and cerebral professional association, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, and not being an accountant myself, when I got this invitation to participate in this event, and more importantly, share this opening ceremony, what first occurred to me was the thought of how a non-accountant will dare to stand and more or less moderate the program before the very best and brightest of the accounting profession assembled from all nooks and crannies of our dear country and even beyond its shores. You will understand my dilemma and helplessness at having hundreds of accountants who have audited many a great institution, ministries, departments, as well as agencies of government and the private sector. Seat and record, input, double enter, analyze, and finally audit all that I have to say here. The thought of applying all of the above accounting due process mechanisms on the post speech an action of a helpless lawmaker, even as I stand before you, remains a scary one. But as in all other challenges I have from time to time confronted in my life, I have since entering this auditorium, assured myself that I will manage to brace up to this new one. At the time our nation is grappling with myriads of economic challenges, Partly arising from the downstream effects of a most ravaging pandemic that has dealt a near fatal blow on the economies of members of the global community, the theme of this year's conference, Strategic Options for Economic Recovery, Role of the Accountant, stands commendable and could not have been more apt. The theme, rather than dwell on the role of the accountant, as a checkman, a certifier, also some kind of financial processing and systems quality assurance professional, realizes as well as acknowledges that without a recovered economy, the accountant has nowhere to practice his profession. This is quite unlike the answer we always heard from students of the Department of Accountancy while in school. Each time we reminded them of how resources were becoming scarce in those days and seek to acquire what they will count or account for as accountants since they might likely graduate from school when money might have completely disappeared. They never failed to inform us that they would count stones if there was no money to count. In a way, as much as the wit but simply emotional answer we got from those young will be accountants of those days did not seem to be any more reasonable than a clever answer to a left pulling joke. It does not seem, after all, that that answer fits the accountant into his proper bill as a relevant solution provider for all situations and purposes in our everyday life. He is the conscience and consciousness of a nation that wants to get things right. He is the watchman of the financial empire of the world, the ever-record keeper of all the resources that 
that nature and mankind have gifted life with, and above all, he is the policeman of bureaucracy and the organized public and private lives. The accountant, as we shall see from various discussions ahead, of course in this conference, is everything to life. So as we gather to pour through the team and the subtitles of this year's conference, we must not lose sight of the imperatives of the subtitles, which principally deal with the ability and necessity of the accountant himself to self-assess, to keep himself in check, and bind himself to a series of predetermined professional moral codes and ethical benchmarks that usually keep him focused on doing his job. As we say in popular parlance, without fear or favor. Not even for himself or for any members of his family. The above mindset speaks to the weekly in the string of activities which constitutes our national life and individual lifestyle. We are a nation of waste that also affords accountability. It is therefore no secret that our nation has been levelled a corrupt one and that in spite of the policies aimed at curbing the menace of endemic corruption that thrives among us as a country by the present administration, I am not sure how much orientation we have received to do things differently and right. So as we listen to great men and women of learning, scholars and accounting professionals with deep experience and insight on the profession and activities of life, discuss the area of topics that have been earmarked for this conference, let us all be challenged to toe the line of the ethical precepts of this novel profession and professionals and be led, as it were, by the hand of the place they wish to lead us. For the accountants, if everyone will do their job correctly and accountably, there is no missing the place of our dreams. As I end this speech, let me again commend everyone who has got one role or another to play in the course of this conference. It is in intellectual, in intellectual discussions like this that we discover the hidden solutions in our challenges as a people. As an association, Anna has held itself out as a bastion of hope and progress for our dear country. I dare not arrange other bodies to do the same. I call on us especially, those from other professions, institutions, corporate bodies, the organized private sector, etc., all which are represented here to offer Anna support and the kind of cooperation collaboration needed to not only make yourself stronger, but to evolve a better nation. Every synergy aimed at achieving progress must be harnessed to the letter for the good of our country, my dear. As a parliament, and particularly the ninth House of Representatives, led by His Excellency Speaker, Fermi Hakim Ajami Adela, in line with his policy of synergizing for collective progress as enunciated in his legislative agenda for this assembly, our doors and arms remain widely open for ideas and programs that will make for progress in our dear nation. One of the discussions uh, this afternoon Ask if he is being political. I would like uh, to say yes, he is being political. And I would like to encourage the ethical account.
counterparts to participate in the democratic process by contesting elections at all levels so that they can they can contribute to their culture more effectively in the democratic process for better transformation of our dear country. Once again, I welcome you all to the 26th edition of the annual National Conference of Canon holding here in Abuja. God bless you for coming. Enjoy your session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President and Chairman of Council, Your Excellency, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. You can all agree with me that the peace of the message from the Chairman of the Princess Conference. Honorable Yusuf Uba Yakubu, a member as a representative representing Gumni Hong Federal for Students of Adam of State, is quite straightforward. And because of that chairman of this conference, let's together thank him with a resounding round of applause for his presentation. Why we go on straight to take the next item of the program of this opening ceremony? Let me just also remind you that conference is a very serious business where if you come, apart from the photograph you'll be having, something which is key, networking. You can't come to conference and go back as you can. Make sure that at least you have networked and have met 10 people who you have never met before that are your professional colleagues. I think you'll be doing yourself a lot of good. Before I bring on stage to keep the speaker, I just want to share with you, I'm not wasting time at all, but just to tell you how some of your neighbors that you have distracted. You know, during the COVID hiding period, you were hearing NCDC, I mean NCDC, NCDC. So my friend, my neighbor just came to me. I was even looking at this. He just came and was asking me, say, neighbor, this NCDC said, which party it be? I just asked him to reverse. I said, it is not a party. He said, it's a company. Would that guy say, yes, it's a company. So he said, what is the meaning of the, of the company, NCDC? We invest. I just told him, my friend, is Nigeria Corona Development Company job? Just leave me. He said, ah, neighbor, why didn't you bring the job inside now? I said, yes, and there's no change in that NCDC. I said, yeah. okay, job. But the name of that Chinese man who was in government, and that is the name of the job. And then he said, eh, Chinese man. I said, bro, so you don't know say this Kobe now from China. And the names of Chinese people are Zhou, Yong, Chong, Jing, Zhong. So just leave it as the owner of the company. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring up on stage right now the keynote speaker of this year, at this year's conference. He will be leading us, and I want to pray your indulgence, so please give him our attention. Even if you have not been following, this is the one you have to listen to. He's already here, a Red Cup Chief, a Red Cup Professor of Review, Professor Abu Yu Abu, Special Director Entrepreneurship Development Center in Boeing State University of Alabama. He will be taking off to the key. Let's put our hands together for this professor of review as he's already standing here to take his message to us. So welcome, sir.
president. The president of the Association of Nigeria National Council in Nigeria. My friend and brother. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes. 
days later, we still have another more to process our products. What happened during the colonial era? Was that the railway ran from Lagos to Igbo to Ibarra and went to Karana Mola to collect all the cocoa, coffee and cotton and went and corrected the granite and came down through a new entry, came to Makoni to Tugbo and Enugu and collected all the other ones and shipped them out to London. The cocoa market was in London. Each region had its marketing ball. And there were crown natives in London. The northern Nigeria had a crown native. The eastern Nigeria had a crown native. And the western Nigeria had a crown native. When they went to London to sell their produce, it is what they paid you that you received. The prices were fixed there. And up to today, the commodity capital of the world is London. And so technically, Nigeria has no economy. But we talk of economic development. Today, Nigeria is running a voodoo economy. From mixed economy to mixed up economy, now we have a voodoo economy. An economy where the central bank does not even know how much money is in circulation. Because the people who are meeting and printing money in this country are more than the central bank. Then you know 
that no development is taking place in the Nigerian economy. Somebody again said that economic development means the expansion of entitlements of human beings within the nation. In the area of expanding capacities, literacy, education, health, and so many other indicators. At the turn of the 20th century, the Keynesian economists told us that the best way to run a national economy was by the government providing infrastructure and then allowing the private sector to take charge. But the new economies said no. You must allow the private sector to run the show. Government has no business with the business of the company. The former model is seen in the UK and the rest of Europe. And the second model of private sector having a square is in the US. The US says only the private sector will take sway. And the UK says, let the public sector take charge of it, the infrastructure, and then the private sector will come and do the economic development. What does it translate to? There must be a capability expansion in families if you want to measure economic development. In families, in families, that is where you measure economic development. Two, there must also be a capability expansion in poverty reduction. And thirdly, there must be a capability expansion in social services. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria is running a rentier economy. Nigeria since 1970 has been collecting rents from oil companies. It's a disease curse. It's a disease curse. When the oil companies get the oil from the ground, they take them to overseas, then they refine them for you, and they sell what is required to you. And some young Nigerians are in the cartel of supplying Nigerians the kerosene, the petrol, PMS, and the diesel. Yet there are four refineries in this country that are more important. Lying covetous, dysfunctional, and useless. So you believe that the only source of income GDP in this country, the oil and gas, that you just have a fully charge. And so it is very difficult in that situation to begin to talk about the economic recovery of a nation. Let us begin to analyze the sectors. Between 2004 and 2008, I was a federal commissioner in the National in the Universal Basic Education Commission. And we went around the whole country to look at the schools because the former speakers have talked about human capacity, human resources. Ladies and gentlemen, as we went out of the schools in this country, primary schools, some of us members of that 
Commission work. Children were sitting on the trees. And even at that, more than 70 million children were out of school. Maybe 2008 and 2012, I was at Canada in the NTR. And our job was to assess the quality of teachers in this country.
start once for for you this year? And can we give it a standing ovation, please? A standing ovation for what he has done by initiating our appeal in the Federal House of Representatives and for the going forward. On that note, I want to say thank you very much and thank you again. Thank you very much. Please, I will take two more good messages. I'll take the first one now, and then the president or president will encapsulate all other good messages. May I please invite the Executive Secretary, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Ambassador Shwai Ahmed, please come forward and do two way good good messages, and then the President of President will please get ready. Thank you very much for the whole. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the President and Chairman of Council of Parliament. Other council members, I'd like to stand on this protocol. On behalf of the management and staff of Financial Reporting Council, I'd like to congratulate the President and the members of ANA for this very successful 26th annual national conference. I also want to congratulate you on, on the choice of the theme for this conference, which is very apt and timely uh, in the face of the global um, economic situation uh, occasioned by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we at Financial Reporting Council we consider ANA as a very, very important strategic partner and that is why the Act has given ANA two board seats on the Council. I want to thank this opportunity to thank uh, the past members of uh, uh, the board of presenting honors, uh, Professor Mainoa, Professor Folio, Professor Arua, for the valuable contributions that they have made to the uh, progress of the council. Um, the board of the FRC has just been inaugurated with uh, Dr. Injewe as the new chairman of the council. And as we begin to work, thank you. As we begin to work on our strategic agenda for the next four years, we will count on the valuable contribution of ANA as a body and members of ANA in areas of sustainable sustainability reporting, in areas of implementation of ESA in the areas of uh, development of uh, code of corporate governance for the public sector, which we hope to achieve in the next few months. Once again, on behalf of the Council, I want to congratulate the President once again and all members of the panel for this uh, um, successful 26th annual national conference. I will look forward to the community that will emerge from this, con from, from this conference. Once again, thank you so much, for the Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause. Please, in most cases, once to see is two minutes, please observe the two minutes. Before I call the President of Presidents to come and do a good message, let me just quickly acknowledge that not in Paris, I will see that was the SCNA or the General of the local government in Moscow. A round of applause for him. May I invite the President of the Association of Professional Bodies? of Nigeria to please come forward and we will be message and contract. A round of applause is Let's put our hands together for him. He's the president of president, the president of professional bodies. Oh my goodness. And we know he's the quick manager of time. He will just take two minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is R.P. Ogi Gola. 
Mr. Olea, the past president of the Nigerian Institute of Olea, and the president of the National Professional Body of Nigeria. Uh, in great pleasure to, uh, in the first place, acknowledge and congratulate the president and the chairman of council of the Association of uh, National Accountants of Nigeria, Reverend Canon Professor Benjamin Tuka, the CCO of SCNA. Uh, we've uh, had the opportunity to interact a lot of time, but I have to put a record here that the support that the APBA has enjoyed from your association predates even Professor Mainoma. It was a part of the design, and it is my belief that it's going to be escalated in your time. We appreciate it a lot, and uh, that's exactly why I couldn't, uh, but come here in person, uh, the least I could do was to make sure that the gay person to appreciate you for that support and we believe that uh, we still have a lot to do together and God be with us. So once Leo. more, congratulate you on this 26th uh, national conference. Uh, the ambience is good and we have seen it. Like well, well I, 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 all I can do is wish you to get it a very fruitful and a completely shared expression as you continue. Congratulations, Mr. Mosby. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. Some of you were waiting to see when he put his hand in the pocket and he was talking to me slowly. He told there was a black army, an envelope that would be handed over to me. But then it is his card for transparency, so that I'm an ethical accountant. So we are kidding.
Professor Benjamin, distinguished members of Anand and members that attended this conference, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be here. Even though I'm here in my capacity as a member of Anna, and I decided to attend this conference, as also in a special premier support. But when I came here, and then we met some challenges, and as usual, an accountant is ever ready at any time to do what is needful in order to support those challenges. So that is why I'm standing on behalf of the council in order to declare this conference. But before I do the declaration, I would like to first of all congratulate the chairman or the president and chairman, Professor Benjamin, for assuming the leadership of Anna. I'm congratulating you, sir. May Allah guide you, may Allah help you and protect you. So that you can continue the good work that your predecessors have done. I also like to thank Professor Menoma, who was the immediate past president, as well as all the immediate past presidents that are here, especially to also pray for the soul of all the former vice chairmen or president, about all of them that died before. The other seven and help them for internal rest. After that, the guest speaker or the professor who made a presentation here, and I listened to him attentively. And I know that a lot of people will be wondering why would the professor make that kind of presentation? Because to me, he has said exactly what is happening in Nigeria. Prof, we really thank you for that. We know what, I know what I'm saying. This country, the economy of Nigeria, or the Nigerian economy, we need to do a lot of work in order to revive it. The recovery of this economy is not only by theory, by theory. it has to be on practical means. And one thing that I would like to call the attention of the president and other president and chairman of different professional bodies. Whenever you have conference like this, it is important, apart from your members that will attend, you should also extend your hands to the policy makers and also to those that will implement the policy. What I mean, the National Assembly members, like this one that we have here, they have finance committee, they have budget, they have appropriation committee and whatever. They need to be part of this. At the same time, other professional bodies, whenever they are going to have their conferences, different committees, they need to be part of it. Because whatever you are going to discuss, they are the one to help the population policy to them, and then for the people that will implement that to the executive side. So I would like to appeal to all of us, that whenever we're having this kind of conferences, we should extend our hands to them, let them be part of it. Not that only after we finish them, we send them community or whatever resolution that we have made. That resolution, when you send it, they will just keep it. Let them be part of it. Let them take, uh, be part of the discussion and then understand the yearning and the aspirations of people so that we can have a better idea for all of us. My job is very simple. On behalf of the council and in the name of Allah, the most beneficial, the most merciful, I hereby declare the 26th annual annual conference of the God in the Lord.
Excellency, the Water Dogger of the Jonas State, the member of Anna Efelo, the Chairman of the Conference, past Presidents, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We have come thus far, and at this opening ceremony, I would like to invite no other person than Dr. Nurdin Alpha. Abdullahi Abanai FCNA, so please come forward with the vote of thanks. Please, after that, we will have group autographs. Don't forget that Anna has a university, and the class are going now, Brown, but I'll tell you in details. Yes, the chief executive, sir. President, President of other institutes, professional institutes, the Deputy Secretary, Financial Body Council of Nigeria, and the Nigeria participants on behalf of the President and Council. We wish to express our sincere appreciation to the Honorable Minister of FCT, who has happily represented today in this meeting. Also, we wish to express our sincere gratitude to His Excellency, former Governor of the United States. We also wish to express our sincere gratitude to the chairman of the conference, Honorable Nabu, for sharing time to be with us today throughout the day. We also wish to express our sincere appreciation to presidents of other professional institutes who are, who are here present and those who are represented here. We are also grateful to all who made this conference to be successful. We also, as always, express our gratitude to the past president of the association who are always ready to support the activities of the association. We also wish to express our appreciation and regards to all participants of this conference who have left different delegations to participate in the conference. And the conference has started when with good participants and we are grateful to the Almighty for achieving that. We wish everyone safe journey back home and we wish us all the liberation to bring out uh, solutions that may be, I mean, ideas and solutions that can be preferred to government to us in front of the government. Thank you. Round of applause for the chief executive. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, as we reconvene, at the same venue, we will be starting exactly at. Um, at 9 o'clock tomorrow, and we'll be having a number of sessions, so please ensure that you come around. The President will be appreciating the class, all the class, those who are here, and as the President knows that, we will thank the President. Those of us that are around, they please take note that as soon as the President appreciates, we will take the national anthem. After the national anthem, there will be a group photograph with the president and uh, the dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, may we all rise. May we all rise to take the national anthem to close the opening ceremony. And after that, lunch is already served, so you don't need to wait for lunch. After the national anthem, there will be group photograph. Please take note, there will be group photograph. Please, those of us in front, sorry, photographer, photographer, 
Please, we are discussing the problem.